I'm recording now. Hey guys, Ryan Phantom here. Take a fucking sip, babe. Welcome to stream. I just spent like 20 minutes eating pesto and talking about uh, Mac the Turtle. Uh, so here we are. This is Distant Quest, a fan game. It's a fan game. So before you get into my YouTube comments going, This is fan made, man. I'm so disappointed. It's fan game. And let me, let me hit you with this before you close out of the fucking window and don't watch the video. Pester Quest isn't real. Homestuck 2 isn't real. What's real anymore? The fandom's in the shitter. Anyway. <laughs> I start the stream by calling this... By saying we're... The recording's 50 seconds in and I've already said the fandom's in the shitter. Alright. Let's check out the warnings. So this is Distant Quest. General content warnings. This game contains spoilers for Press Request and Friend Sim. This game contains flashing lights, general statements, warning for violence, blood and murder, adult and existential themes. Volume 1, Death, Discussions of Mental Health, Allusions to Suicide. Volume 2, Slavery, Assault of a Slave, One Broken ho Bone, Igor. Damn! Is Mac Jr. canon? Sure. Oh. What? Um. Yeah. So, I, I figured this will be... I think this will be less... Uh, this is... Okay, this is a general guess. I don't actually know. I'm assuming this is going to be a little less funny and a little more, like, dark. Because it's the ancestors, but I'm not sure. Uh, so anyways, let's get started with Prologue, Aradia Time. There's a cute little icons down in the corner. Oops. You've been in space quite a while, huh? The company of horror terrors is both soothing and alarming. They are far more amicable than you would have foreseen. Just willing to hang around. Maybe they just like to hang around in general. The void isn't empty that way. There she is! That's a good spr- Oh, you did the ears like that! It's good. That's good. That's good. It's a good- It's a good Aradia. Congratulations on your good Aradia. Not to interrupt your brooding, but I think there's something we can do here. You don't think you're ready to go back into the main narrative just yet? I have a way to solve that. I can tell you my favorite story. Is it about bones? Aradia looks at you funny. Some type of bones, but not the ones you'd expect. Skeletons in Alternia's closet. Hold on, wait a minute, is this... When does this take place? Are we already, like, is this after Pester Quest? This might be after Pester Quest. I might just be floating in the void protecting Skya. And Aradia just showed up and started telling me a story. It is. Oh, man. So we've got, um... Befriend us, which is between, what is it, be between Friend Sim and Pester Quest, and we've got this, which is after Pester Quest. There she goes. Already flies a few feet away from you and seems to focus. You're very impressed, but hesitant. Arati is favorite story, and it's not about bones? That could mean a myriad of things. This is a story of the signless. The signless. Something that rings a bell. It's not the name, but something else that makes you feel that you've been near his legacy. You push the feeling away and take steps toward uh, forward the portal. I think that's a uh, I think that's a typo. Horror terrors seem ignorant to the rift in time and your movements. This will change nothing, no? Arati, you mentioned you won't even remember a thing about this. She smiles at you like someone who is keeping a secret. Not a thing. But don't worry about it. 
It isn't my first time. We can look at everything. It does help to remember where you came from, how they lived, and how they met their end. Visual aid is never bad for what would be a fully written, told story. Variety messes with the portal. It reacts the way a TV does when somebody changes channels. It will, have it will help pass the time to just watch this like a movie. Maybe you will get ideas to screw up canon relevance even more. That's not in your mind right now. There we go. The beginning. You're ready. That's the spirit. You step next to Aradia, seeing the portal in a desert on the other side. A familiar troll seems to show the other end. Is that Kanaya? She looks much older. You could argue that I'm pretty sure someone already has. Is that supposed to happen? Aradia doesn't respond. But you both can notice one of the horrors has sneakily touched the portal, and it's way bigger now. Bigger and brighter. The colors are far more vivid and bright. All the static has been sucked up the place. What is happening? Adventure. You both are sucked into the portal, and as everything goes dark, you could swear you could hear Aradia's cackles. Alright. There you go, there's your content warning. Oh my god. Everything happens in a flurry of motion and movement. You reach out to grab Aradia's arm, trying to keep from fall falling on your ambiguous yet surely stunning face, but your hand seems to phase in and out of the horror terror's void. Aradia, of course, just grins at you when this happens, laughing. You feel like you're falling with impossible speed, pushing you down faster and faster. The world around you is a blaze of fire and confusion, and the desert you had been watching reaches up towards you with open, sandy palms. You find yourself screaming, desperate for... Oof. Oof. Owie. Your face. <laughs> it hurts. Oh. Oh. I know where this is. At first, I thought it was, um... At first, I thought that was us. And then I realized it's the signless... You stand slowly, rubbing your head. You're in a dip. The ground concave towards a single smoking point. A crater, maybe. Did you cause this? No, you couldn't have. After all, you're not in the center. It's lit strangely, and your shadow casts down in front of you. There she goes. There's a noise behind you, a sudden inhale. You turn slowly, freezing as the figure... Uh, you see the figure from the portal. The adult, not Kanaya, defensively cradling something in her arms. Teeth bared as she stares down at you with glowing yellow eyes. With an odd sense of calm. MILF! With an odd sense of calm, you note that she doesn't look particularly happy. Wow, adults are massive. You kind of wondered if that was a high blood thing, but Jade's are mid tier and she's still very tall. Ha! <laughs> Whoa, those fangs are real fucking long, huh? It only takes half a second, and then you're blinded by a bright white light. You feel, more than see, something rushing through the air towards you. A snarl cutting through the empty world around you as you feel for certain that you are going to be brutalized. You step back, run back, trying to sputter out something calm and friendly, but you trip and find the glowing figure launching itself at you, glowing eyes wide and panicked and angry. Your hands scramble against the loose earth. But you can't find any purchase. You really don't want to get involved in anything super wild right now. You definitely don't want to die right now. You have no idea what's going on, and in your panic, all you want to do is... Get the hell out of here. That's a good idea. We should do that. And the world around you changes. You, uh, you let out a long, shaky breath. Okay. What the fuck? You call out for a radio, but get no response. Okay, then. You're on your own, it seems. At least these woods seem calming enough. You sit back against one of the trees, letting your heart rate settle for a moment as you try to piece together what it was that just happened. Big Kanaya. Scary noises. Bright light. The last two leave you confused, but you think you've got a handle on the first one. Adults aren't around on Alternia, right? So either that was another criminal or ancestors, right? Like the one Vriska was copying. Maybe you just met Kanaya's hot mom. Grandma? Off in the distance of the woods, 
You hear voices, noises, rustling of leaves and branches being crunched underfoot. A group of people are moving through the area, it seems. You stay where you are, only half paying attention, lost in your thoughts. There's no compulsion to chase down whoever's out there, so you can't even see them anyway. Anyway, this has been fascinating, but maybe you'd better off... Maybe you'd be better off just going back to the horror terrors. Maybe you can find Aradia and try again. Hot mom! Elf. Is that Alternia? Alternians? I'd like to fuck? I like how you wrote Alf first. <laughs> I don't have a voice for her. God. Oh god, there was this really bad voice I used to do for a character in, let's just say, a certain visual novel that I used to read with my good friend Isu on stream before I got relatively famous enough to actually have viewers. We played a less than reputable uh, visual novel, which we never talk about. No bad. Vo well, it is a bad. It was like, nah. It was really deep and really stupid. It wasn't Chocola. Fuck you. Who are you? I'll just do it. You know, whatever. Oh, or you can be found yourself. It's her again. But she seems calmer, older, much more confident within herself. There's an air of pride she carries. With her, you know for certain you would never be able to pull off. Oh, we went to the future. Oh. Can I have a Russian? I can't do a Russian accent. Especially not for that long. Something tells you her question is also somehow a threat. You have no idea how to introduce yourself and end up just shrugging. A friend, you guess? Probably? Friendly, definitely. She narrows her eyes at you. Can I but make her badass? Have you seen the scene where she, like, kills Gamzee? <laughs> and, like... Oh, no, it's not even... It, like, kills Gamzee. No, she chops Aridin in half. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, yes. That's certainly a guaranteed way to make someone trust you. You've hacked it. All of Alternia is yours for the taking. What do you want? You can't use your generic friendship answer then, can you? You tell her you were just hiding out in the woods and heard a bunch of people head off. That's it. You don't even know what you're here for. She doesn't seem overly impressed with your explanation. That's fair. You're not impressed with it either. You're not here to cause trouble in any way, and you let her know. You're just a very neutral, very middle line person. Extremely unbothered by all of this. You're just a regular old person out here in the middle of the woods. Like normal people do. This doesn't seem to improve her outlook on you. Jade eyes track you up and down, and you get the distinct impression she's peeling you apart at the seams. This woman can see right through you. As Ryan... Shifts around in his chair. There we go. Well, you're certainly not normal. That's fair. You're kind of not. I mean, look at you. You're clearly Colbate. You'd be dead in a second if the drones got their grob fronds on you. You're unusual, is what I'm saying. Why is Kanaya's hot mom so mean? <laughs> I love the little sad face you're putting into this. <laughs> you mean, she's right, but still, you've lasted this long. She sighs. This is why I don't do the speaking. I'd tell you to leave, but with the way you are, you can't exactly sneak back into the subgrubs without being noticed. She'd be surprised, but you let her take a moment to think. I need to gather some supplies before we get moving anyway. How about I lead you back into town? 
two sets of gander bulbs works better than one after all. Oh, fuck yes. Road trip with Kanaya's weird mom. She eyes you over for a moment before reaching behind her and handing you what seems to be a miniature, or regular, sized version of the knife on her back. Just in case. I would rather not be traveling with someone who has not have a way to defend themselves. You appreciate her concern, though you wonder what purpose there possibly could be in you having this tiny thing when she's got a big fuck-off knife strapped to her back. She helps to pull you to your feet. There's a moment where she gives you a funny look. Then gives her head a slight shake, as if to chase some thought from it. You give her a hopefully endearing grin. Maybe even an awkward thumbs up. I've been rude. Do you have a name you'd like me to call you? Honestly, at this point, you're far more used to you, or oh, it's you, or hey, what are you doing, or holy fuck, where the hell did you come from, than any kind of name. I can understand that. There's no need to give me any information you're uncomfortable with. We're all just out here trying to survive on this bitch of an Alternia. <laughs> you nod sagely and politely ask for her name in return. You would much rather hear about her than talk about yourself. This is Aradia's favorite story? Tale? Facet of history? After all, you'd have to be good friends with her to try to become friends with this, uh, good friend to her and try to become friends with this suspicious woman. Said suspicious woman pauses, but gives you an answer. My title is Dolorosa. I suppose it was presumptuous of me to assume you'd already known that, even if you were in the area of Sermon. Sermon? What, like a church meeting out of the woods? Doesn't seem right, considering her lack of face pain and general desire to murder you. But what do you know? She gives you a distasteful look. Do I look like a clown to you? What, do I look like some kind of clown? That's a potentially dangerous question to answer for a variety of reasons. You wisely keep your mouth shut. I'm not follower of murderous messiahs. No, that's not the kind of sermon I was speaking of. There's a hesitance to her suddenly, uh, and her eyes flick around the trees behind you, as though the thought of someone maybe listening has occurred to her. One of the hands drifts subtly and lightly downward, Settling on the handle of some big fuck-off weapon at her hip. Have you heard of the signless? Something nags at the back of your mind, but no, you don't think you have. Alternia despises anyone that doesn't fit the mold. Any difference that cannot be obviously exploited, you're called for. Yeah, you've gathered that from being an Alternia for a while. She gives you a look. You're clearly not a troll. I may not be the one who does the preaching, but I can understand the necessity for understanding the environment in which a story is told. Alright, damn. Feel yourself blush from embarrassment. The admonishment of being a lot more effective when it comes from an adult. The Dolorosa with the big iron on her hip. <laughs> Love that song. We're taught to believe in the structures from night we hatch. The caverns were formed to continue the survival of the system, of being destined for a specific role, unable to break away from what you've been bred for, told your life should serve the Empire. Even when the rigid hierarchy of it seems to be absolute hoofby shit, it's near impossible to break out of the mindset of existing within the structure you've been exposed to your entire life. I've met so many people who are angry that they can't progress up the hemospectrum rather than being enraged at the hemospectrum's existence itself. The signless, my... played member, to put it simply, tries to preach for breaking down of the barriers. The worth inherent in people, whether the Empire recognizes that or not. The recognition that warm blood should get more out of what life than they do. The recognition that every grub hatched deserves an equal opportunity to thrive, regardless of arbitrary caste. This is coming out in a very appropriate time, isn't it? Our sermons revolve around those concepts. He preaches so that other people might learn their worth more than what the Empire tells them. And yeah, everyone deserves better. You traveled across Alternia and so many people just struggling under the weight of the system they've been forced to live in. 
It sucks. <clears throat> oh, yes. It just kind of sucks how we're all horrifically oppressed. Not one to overstate a fact, are you? Your phrasing could, admittedly, use a little work. You don't think you've heard the term clade before? What does she mean by it, exactly? <clears throat> it's not a particularly common term. Consider it as a band of people who live for and love each other. A small clan, fiercely loyal to one another. Like a family. She does bring a smile to my face. Delighted surprise crosses her face. And she gives you a small but genuine smile. Warmth coats her tone, even as she speaks cautiously. It's the sort of look that causes you to swell with pride. Kind of approval you'd chase forever if you could. Exactly like a family. I raised the signless as my son. I acted as elusis to him. It's an unorthodox arrangement, but it worked out. Her expression softens a little. You feel a swell of pride at your work. Look at this. You made her smile and everything. I would do anything for him. As you cross into the town proper, her already stiff figure only stiffens further. While her eyes remain focused forward, you're certain that she's paying attention to every sound and movement around you. Not necessarily a suspicious pose to take, considering what Alternia is like. As tense as it feels to travel with her like this, you get the distinct feeling that this is practice motion, watching her wind her way through the streets as she makes sure she's on that perfect balance line between nervous low blood and calm and casual citizen who is allowed to exist. You can't help but realize how exhausting it all must be. In fact, you don't just realize it, you feel it. The constant facade, trying to live in a society that wants to reject her and her clade. Just trying to imagine living like that, it crushes you down a little. As you both turn into some back alley, you prepare yourself for your big friend moment. Oh yeah, you feel it coming, alright? Ask her about emotional state. I like this crusty. I like this crusty back alley image that you've drawn over. It's, it's good. That's some funny shit. You call out quietly to the Dolorosa. She spins around in silent feet in an instant. Her eyes rove over your head before settling on your face, confused that you're coming to a halt. What? Is she like okay? I'm fine. That doesn't strike you as particularly genuine, but alright. She gives you a dirty look. Where did you need to go again? The place you had to leave to. Do you need help getting back? Uh, getting back to your hive? Was she leading you somewhere first? Kind of seemed like she had a place in mind. Hell, she's been pretty independent this entire little adventure you've had. You want to know where you're headed, why you were headed this way. Also, like, how she's doing. How's she doing? You encourage Rosa to open up to you, because you're friendly and want her to be okay. No, like, getting back home, getting back hive. Oh, yeah. It doesn't seem to do anything to improve her mood. Do not call me any form of pet name or nickname if you are not a member of my family. I have a title. Use it. Haha. <laughs> Whoops. Um, she didn't answer the other question? Where's she going? This is where I was leading us regardless. I would have liked to check in here first. Almost theatrically, she extends an arm and bangs a small rhythm on the dirty door beside her. A sermon goer offered us some food and supplies for our travels. I wanted to make sure they were okay and set up for what, uh, when I came back from leading you wherever. There's a shuffling sound behind the door as someone calls out for her to wait from the inside. Sorry. Uh, which part of the town are you heading back towards? You blink and scramble for some kind of answer, thrown off by your inability to forge a friendship with this woman. You, uh, don't actually have a hive to go back to? You don't live here. 
What do you mean you don't live here? Why did you follow me then? You just wanted to see what her deal was. You're sorry. She seemed like interesting and you wanted to know more. You're really apologetic and everything for sort of lying to her. Stop. Just... You mean it, you're really fucking sorry. Please don't leave Dolorosa, who you won't use nicknames on. Stop yelling! You freeze as she grabs you, slapping a hand over your mouth. At first, you thought she was just mad about your blustering, but on the second glance, there's a hint of fear on her face. Sup, up, Isu? She watches the, out the entrance of the alley behind you, completely still. Right. Murder planet. You hold your breath. And hold still. Waiting. Bang! Holy fuck! Dropping you and clutching at her chest, she spins around. A door behind you is slammed open. The troll in the shadows of the doorway babbles a string of quiet, cheapest apologies at the noise. And Dolorosa gives a gentle, amused replies. You enjoy listening in on the conversation. Thank you, Isu. 22 months. Uh, even as you're stabbed with a little envy... You want to get those amused replies? You're focusing so hard on eavesdropping, in fact, that you become a confused at the sudden silence. They seem to have stopped talking for no reason. Or, that is, they seem to have stopped talking for no reason until you hear a whoop behind you. When you turn, your eyes land on a clown and... Oh, fuck. You thought the disembodied voice of an adult clown was frightening. Seeing a full-grown adult clown makes your perfect legs shake. Hey, look what we got here. A runaway, a freak, and a traitor sympathizer. The saccharine sweet words only further drive your fear. She's smiling so wide, like having three unique victims cornered like this is a present. Behind you, you hear the Dolorosa telling the other troll to get back inside in a low voice. The door closes a little too loudly and the clown just laughs. And yeah, that makes sense. This troll blocks the entire exit out of the street. Sub wooden doors and get a stopper from getting her hands on that poor low blood that just wanted to help out. Completely frozen, your mind skipping back over and over and over again to the fact that this clown is fucking massive. You're certain there's no good way to get out of this. If you stand here and try to talk it out, she'll just laugh at you, right? There's no mercy in those eyes, no matter how joyful the expression she wears is. You can't just let Kanaya's not but sort of mom die here in this alleyway. Would Kanaya stop existing if you did? You haven't exactly been careful with threads of time, but unexisting one of your friends like some kind of back to the future fuck up. <laughs> uh, you got me. You got me. Got me with a back to the future reference. You got me. I get that reference. Alright. Some kind of back to the future fuck up isn't exactly something you'd want to do. Just by being here and talking to her, haven't you already diverted the Dolores' path? What if she dies here because of you? What do you want? Her voice is cautious, but delicately held in the flat and bored tone. The clown's grin splits open even wider, and you've seen some weird shit, but that can't be natural. She laughs, like the idea of her having to justify what she's about to do is the biggest joke imaginable. Was looking for some help preaching and rending done tonight. Wanna help with that, babe? The clown sneers. I read that completely wrong, that's fine. The clown sneers. And the Dolorosa glowers back evenly, lips curled up in the faintest sign of a snarl. You're gonna see your friend's mom get clown murdered if you don't do anything to stop it. 
you have to do something quick. Oh, I do get choices. I wasn't sure. What are we doing, guys? Where are we dropping, boys? Where are we dropping in the, in the plot narrative? The fact that Jinx J went distract the clown smiley face makes me think that that's going to be the death end, so let's do distract the clown. Before either of the trolls has a chance to speak further, you teleport behind the clown anime style and try to shove her. Wow, she's built like a house. That's just solid muscle. It'd be genuinely surprising if she feels it. You quickly teleport out of the way again before she can fuck you up entirely. That is an attack you would not survive. The Dolorosa stares at you in a momentary second of shock, before deciding instead of to focus on the issue at hand. She pulls out that big fuck-off sword of hers, and you feel a stab of panic at her expression, despite the fact that you are not one to... You are not the one that look is directed at. Kanai's hot mom is terrifying. Sputtering with indignation at the sudden turn of events, the clown spins again and decides to lunge for the non-teleporting member of your party. Something draws you to watch Rosa as she's about to be attacked. Her eyes flick up the empty alleyway, checking over the empty streets behind the enemy, charging her down. No one in sight. It's just the three of you. Jade eyes lock and narrow on the clown, who has a flash of hesitation on her face. You don't blame her. Hesitation becomes disgusted, horrified fear. The clown stumbling back and landing on her ass is like some kind of brutal wrong lightning bug. The Dolorosa's skin lights up, blinding white. What the fuck is this? It sounds as though the clown is desperately trying to come off as though she's still intimidating one in, in this situation. What the fuck is wrong with you? There's a flash of long, sharp fangs as Dolorosa gives a cold laugh. Just wanted to do some preaching and rending, babe. By now, she's walked up to the still down clown and pinned her to the ground with a single foot. Dolorosa is not small or meek-looking woman by any means. But that clown has least a foot on her. You felt it. She was stacked. There's no way. But the clown struggles to get up. Staring up in anger at the furiously growing jade blood over her. Holy fuck. The Dolorosa leans down, hands on the sword of hers, and despite the situation, despite your allegiances in this particular instance, you can't help but cry out to her, concerned for what's coming next. She looks over her shoulder at you, expression unreadable, then gives you a small smile. Okay. It's going to be okay. You're certain nothing could possibly go wrong. Go make sure our friend is alright. Help them out for me. We don't want anyone getting hurt tonight. Okay, yeah, that's a good plan. She'll keep the scary clown out of action, and you'll help the nice troll get out of here if they need to. She's gonna kill that fucking clown. Alternian coffee maker. Alternian soap bottle. Alternian paper, <laughs> paper towel roll holder. You teleport quickly into the house, call out gently, and find them hidden the way. You ask about climbing out a window, but they give you a strange look. Apparently low bloods in these sort of buildings don't bother with them. It's expensive to get sun blocking fabric. Is that what <laughs> Is that what that poster says up there? Is it the... Is it the... Is it the gay thing? It, 
It has enough lines. It has enough. You know what? It, it has enough. The, the tall one. There are two wolves inside of you. One is gay. The other one is gay. They're both gay. That Okay. It would line up perfectly to the amount of text that is on that poster. Doesn't take more than a few minutes to help them do what they need to gather the necessary items for a temporary escape. You drop them off on the other side of the subgrub, then return to the valley. The valley. Alley. Where the Dolorusa stood, hands out in front of her, soared through the throat of the new dead clown. Now dead clown. Her back stays to you as she yanks it out, wiping purple blood from its blade with her arm. Only as she slides it back into its sheath does she turn and notice you. What happened? There was no way for me to salvage the situation without letting innocent people get hurt. Not everyone will listen. Sometimes we have to do things we're not proud of in order to survive. She sighs, stepping away from the clown's corpse. And gives you a weary and genuine smile. There's not a spot of blood on her. Even as purple begins to pull out in the alleyway. Come on. Help me carry these supplies back. If you don't want to If you don't have a hive to go to. Oh right. Yeah of course. The troll had had them stashed just inside the hive's entrance. She watches as she hoists the larger of the two bags over her shoulder. And do the same with your own. Without a doubt. You know she could carry both. The pair of you step out into the alley and back into the street. The strut pod paths are almost entirely empty of other trolls. You walk in what you hope is a companionable silence for a while. So, you can teleport. And she can glow. You're learning fun facts about each other tonight. Her gaze cuts down to look at you. Yes. Which means it wasn't just a wild imagining of my panicked pan when I saw you appear before me ten sweeps ago. Oh. Oh. The bright flash and snarling. That was her. Now that you think about it, it makes sense. Actually, you feel embarrassed it took you this long to really connect these dots. Have you been following me? Or is this just a twist of fate that we've met again? Um, sort of both. You haven't been, like, tracking her throughout her whole life or anything, but you were specifically told that her life is interesting, important. She doesn't seem to know how to respond to that. It's a longer story than you'd really be able to explain, but basically, you can jump through time and, and the same way you can jump through space. So while well for her, it's been sweeps since that first meeting. For you, it hasn't been long at all. Yeah. She takes a moment to process this. I would... Ask that you do not let word of my abilities to spread. The flashy glowing? Yes, the flashy glowing. Your phrasing is, as always, impeccable. What was that? Like, is it a mutation, or... Not that she has to tell you anything. Would you believe me if I said I wasn't entirely sure? You completely believe her, and nod vigorously to let her know this. You were there when it first started to manifest out in the desert crater she nods looking away from you again distant i used to live back in the caverns with the other jade bloods it consists it it's considered a safe haven away from the brutality and complexities of the surface it's a place of life lucy and grubs born there bond there everyone knows their function their role and fits neatly into it the caverns are where everyone is assigned their purpose. I hated them. Holding your tongue, you let her speak. There's a storyteller's tone to her voice, and you find yourself compelled to simply listen. She keeps walking through the streets, feet barely making any noise against the pavement. Of course, Jade Bloods aren't allowed to just leave, but I tried. I succeeded in what I set out to do, but it didn't last. She falls still. One hand drifting over her midsection absentmindedly, fingers just touching the fabric under her ribs. The myths have been muddied over time, but the facts lined up in such a way that made it impossible to really deny it. Waking up from dead tends to make uh waking up from the dead tends to make one accept their new reality. Oh, wait, oh I have yet to meet another rainbow drinker in my sweeps of travel. 
I suspect it is in some way a mutation, or perhaps simply a rare chance of genetics. The two are similar, so we may as well conflate them. I don't think semantics like that would really protect me from the culling fork. I don't think, uh, or from worse. Holy shit. Can I as ancestors of sexy vampire? A sexy, glowy vampire? That's cool as fuck. Yo, Dollar Rosa, she was just... I don't know how old she is. <laughs> so she attacked you just because she left the caverns and everything new was a threat or something? Not that someone suddenly appearing out of thin air wouldn't freak anyone out regardless of their current point in life. Yo, yo, Dollar Rosa, she was just MILF! Something like that. One leading, leaving the caverns, I found a grub. Not that it's impossible to find a grub outside of the caverns, but this grub had no lucis, no shelter, and no place on existing on the hemospectrum. He was essentially castless. Signless. And that made him a threat. A decent jade blood would do their duty and call the thing. But I wasn't exactly a good jade blood. Or at least, not according to what I've been taught. Certainly not dis decent. Yo, Dollar Rosa, she was just a MILF when she found a very rest We can make this work. If we, if we all work together, we can make this work. When the universe created a very strange grub, it seemed unfair to leave it there. Mutant bloods can't have loose eye. Their cast isn't bred into any type. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. And so they're just destined to die anyway, unless a rare cross-cast bond happens. But it survived, making it through the trials. It had escaped, and now there was nowhere for it to go. It felt sickening. And if I was already going to be breaking the rules by escaping, I might as well break the rules by trying to find this grub elusive too, right? I thought it wasn't possible for the Empire to consider my actions any more illegal than my surface existence already was. She grins at that, a sharp flash of fangs. Her eyes meeting yours briefly. I was wrong, of course, but still. I'd had one goal my entire life, and after escaping the caverns, I felt lost. Purposeless. There's not exactly any jobs that offer freedom to Jade Bloods. I wanted to I wanted proof that things could exist and survive outside of the rules. So I'd made it my goal to force Eleusis to bond with the grub. He was a certain factor in a tumultuous time for me. It would be hard for me not to be defensive. Anything, anyone, could be a danger to either of our freedoms. Wait, but she raised him, right? You'd thought, for some reason, you'd gotten the idea in your head that she'd chosen to look after him. You hadn't realized it wasn't her intention from the start. No. I didn't intend on keeping him. The idea didn't even occur to me. I wanted him to have something of his own life as much as he could a regular chance like any other grub from the cavern i tried to tell myself a sense of duty that drove me not compassion not her shoulders bounced slightly in an idle shrug she smiles to herself almost as if laughing at her own words love i traveled for perigees no lucis would bond i had to fight to keep the thing alive I'd had no goal but to find this grub elusis to take it in, determined to protect it, look after it for so long. When he spun, spun his cocoon, her face goes dark for a moment, then she gives you a wry smile. There's nothing quite like realizing you found yourself a purpose only after said purpose is essentially in a coma for an interde indeterminate amount of time. He deserved the chance to live a life of his own, didn't he? And if nothing else could give him that, I would. So she became the Grub's mom. Yes, as I said earlier, he is my son. I am, for lack of better words, his mother. Troll mom. She gives a not-so-genuine laugh at the lucification of her title. There is no true name for what I am, who I am. 
What am I? Who am I? It's not exactly an orthodox relationship. I can understand if that brings up a sense of confusion, but it's important. It means something. He means something. It'd be kind of a dick move for you to bring up human families now, wouldn't it? <laughs> so you nod and give her an awestruck look. Not that the latter is entirely faked. The Dolorosa did something that has never been done before, as far as she's aware. And if this is the past, then as far as you're aware, too. That's impressive. Not to only run away, but to do something entirely unprecedented. She's like the ultimate mom. I am not a Lucis. I didn't know what to teach him. What skills he would need when I would let him go. I still don't know. But I know I'll try. All I'm doing is trying. Science f science. Silence falls between you for a long time. It's uncomfortable, but it has a weight to it. Brooding. It's not uncomfortable. You cross back into the forest once more. That stiffness from her stance has disappeared along with the threat of being watched, but her shoulders remain tensed. She must be proud of him. I am. How couldn't I be? He is constantly in the process of trying to reinvent a broken world. You frown. Despite her words, despite the genuine love and warmth you've seen since she has for her son, there's an offbeat in her tone, like she's scared. I am not afraid. You didn't mean to say that. I don't think you know what you do and do not mean. And I don't think you are in any position to judge my relationship with my clade. All four of us fight to better Alternia. Four? It makes sense that her clade would be more than just her and her son, but still. You feel her closing up again. And in a ploy to keep her speaking warmly with her, you ask her about the other members of her family. She smiles, even though you're sure she's seen through your cunning plan. They're delightful. Full of love and life and so, so much good. So four, that's her. That's her, that's the signless, that's, um... Uh, Nepeta's mom. And, uh... Yeah, uh, Salx is... Salx. Yeah. Yeah. Disciple. 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 You, you say disciple and the first thing I think of is, uh, KOTOR 2. That's the, that's the worst, the worst player character. The worst party member in KOTOR 2 is the Disciple. Imagine Prince Charming from Shrek 2. That's what he looks like and acts like, and he's the worst. And I wish he wasn't in that game. They're delightful, full of love and life, and so, so much good. My son's relationship with them transcends quadrants. We all travel together. They help lead sermons, help keep them safe. Our followers know they are important to him. They joined us along our journey. My clay are the most important people in the world. Most people, most important people in the world to me. That sense of brooding returns. You try as you might, you can't lift it again. Various attempts to redirect the conversation or to restart it get more or less brushed off as you walk through the trees. You can't help but let the mood infect you. You've seen Alternia's future. You know that whatever it is this, these guys are doing, it doesn't work. But as you looked ahead of you, as the Dolorosa stalks through the trees, Determined and focused on her path. You refuse to tell her that. Sorry, I'm getting a drink. <sighs> Cherry Pepsi! <sniffs> Says he's spinning, though. Is there a point in getting to understand her story? You know that it had been a bad ending. Alternia needs more people like her. People who care about its future. That you can tell her. That she's strong. That you admire what she's doing. Here. Can I have a Pepsi free? Free? You gotta pay for it. Alright, then get me a tab. Tab? I can't give you a tab unless you order something. Give me something without any sugar. Yeah, 
without any sugar. Your praises do not relax the Dolorosa. In fact, they only heighten that tension in her. You try again. Pepsi suck. Aw. I like Pepsi. You try again. She helps someone tonight. She's got food for her family. Good people like her are needed, right? That's what she believes. You're glad to have met her. Even in the face of everything, she keeps fighting. Even though you know it's objectively not true, you tell her that Alternia will change because of her. And what do you know? Maybe it really will. Just because things are still bad later on, it doesn't mean their messages can't be passed on through time. Your mind falls back to Tizius, the exhausted teal blood who dug to find more about these revolutions, who wanted to reform Alternia. That's one more person who wants to change the world. Change the world. What's that meme? What's that meme? One last message. Change the world. Lord Potato. Dr. Pepper is also one of my favorites. I like Dr. Pepper a, a lot. My final message changed the world. Goodbye. Seltzer water only. I actually really like seltzer water. Like, not even cut with anything. I like drinking just straight seltzer water. Flavored seltzer water is fucking great. The best part is it's got zero everything. So, like, you, this, this is a really good excuse to just be like, yeah, it's healthy. Because it's just, like, water. There you go. God, there are moments where I'm like, if I didn't make my thumbnails custom, this would be it. This would be the one. You don't tell her that. You can't tell her about the faint traces of her legacy that you didn't run into. But stop. You're sorry? Please just stop talking. Oh, okay. But for how long, though? Like, is this just a brooding silence so she can say something cool and inspiring? Where she could tell you about how her clade is going to change the world, or... You know, a moment too late, that her fists are clenched and shaking. I did not ask for you to come with me so I could be condescended to by someone who does not know me. Why did she ask you to come? I... She throws her hands up in the air, exasperated, exhausted. I don't know! I don't know why I am bothering to let you speak to me. I would have been able to return to our camp much faster without you slowing me down. Maybe some part of her wanted the help? Carrying the supplies back? I do not need your help. Yeah, but maybe she wanted it. Isn't that sort of the thing she's trying to teach? Maybe you fundamentally misunderstood the vibe of their sermons. Just because we are telling Alternia to change, it does not mean it's happening. 
Doesn't mean it will happen. Something inside you freezes. Did you let something slip? But no. No, you didn't. You know you didn't. So what she can... What can she mean? You've seen it, haven't you? Look around this place. Everything we do takes us two step forwards and then we're shoved back. She pauses, uncomfortable with her hopelessness. The silence grows, a tension between you as if it seems to fill up inside her. A flood of anger and sorrow and hurt until the dam bursts. The Dolorosa is spinning around to face you, furious. What can I do? I didn't sign up for this. I'm not made to be gentle and soft and calm. I can't soothe people's fears. I can't convince anyone that things will be better, because quite frankly, I'm not sure they can. I would save my son thousands of times over, but that isn't a heroic act. Isn't it selfish? There's something in her voice you can't quite catch. Caught between desperation and guilt, even as this intensity in her grows. Wanting him to be here in a world I don't believe can change to accept him. There's a beat between you, and she grows quiet. For a moment, you think she's settled. Your stance relaxes, head turned away. Well, you don't think it's selfish to want someone to have a chance. Even against all odds, you think existence in general is better than not. Death, you inform her, sucks ass. She turns back to you with a glare. Right, sorry. Not the right time or space for flippin' jokes about dying. You're bad. You don't think she appreciates the apology. Tell me it's worth it. I would do anything for my clade, anything, and I will fight this alongside them, but at the end of the night I will choose them over Alternia, every time. You can see through time, can't you? Your stomach twists as she gives a sickening laugh. Look then, tell me it's worth it, letting them do this, putting them in danger for people that want nothing more than to tear them down. The day spent awake, sick with fear and paranoia hearing every fucking noise, seeing death in every shadow. Tell me it's fucking worth it. Her voice has risen again, teeth bared in anger at the world. Firebrand eyes are hooked onto you, and you're incapable of moving away. It seems, this time, she wants an answer. You can zap forward, put her fears at ease. This air is a little unwieldy for you, but you surely know her somewhat. You'll be better, to f you'll be better able to follow her timeline along. You've seen her fire, her passion, and reminds you of so many of your old friends. You want her to know this is worthwhile, the difference it can make. But given her current mood, maybe leaving it wouldn't be a good move. She can definitely handle herself, that's for sure, but that doesn't mean she has to be alone. Damn, this fucking... These are long! Oh my goodness. We're almost an hour into the recording, and we're just, like, getting to the second choice. What are we picking, guys? Should you stay or should you go? Do 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 do. Stranger Things season four. Do 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 do. Stay. You can't tell her that things are going to be okay. To start, you doubt she would believe you if you did. You can't tell she. She can tell she doesn't trust you, and it pains you to say it. It's okay that she doesn't. I don't need your pity. Yeah, exactly. You don't think she would want it either. Not that you'd be so bold as to assume what she'd want, of course. It's just, you know, a guess. Or something. Okay, you take a little breath here. You gotta steal yourself for what you're going to say next. But you don't think, again, not that you know anything, anything or would assume you knew her, that she or anyone would yell at someone in the middle of the woods if they weren't, uh, what? Spill it out. Spit it out. You look like you've got a rivet spawn on your swallow tube. In your swallow tube. Shall you play the Mind Stuck mod pack someday, Ryan? No, no, no. I don't mod Homestuck. Fuck. <sighs> I, I had a choice of two words, and I said, and I said the wrong one. 
I don't mod Minecraft. If they weren't, you know, under emotional distress. I don't think it takes a genius to figure that out. Tell us about Homestuck mods. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there's this one called Pester Quest. There's this one called Homestuck 2, which ruins the entire comic. No, I'm kidding. Do you shove your cartilage nub into every troll's emotional business like the planet's most desperate ashen whore? Or am I special? You'd be lying if you said the first weren't true in some regard, but also, ouch. Yes, Perp did make that. I don't exist to soothe your hurts, and I'm not going to soften my words for anyone. Just because you've done good things, it doesn't mean I necessarily have to like you as a person. Not that I know anything about you as a person, but the things you've displayed, I will not claim to be a fan. Again, you reiterate, ouch. Prying into my personal issues will not win you any favors, so back off, alright? Okay. Even though you totally believe that she kind of brought this topic up in the first place, but like, whatever, it's fine. One thing, though? Fine, fine, one. If she's bottled all of this up for who knows how long... To the point where she just shouts it at someone she doesn't even like in the woods. Wouldn't it be good, maybe, not that you're pushing, for her to talk it out to, like, literally anyone? Not necessarily you. Just a person. Maybe she's one already close with. Well, maybe one she's already close with. It's Kanaya's mom, Britt. She eyes, her eyes narrow at you. My family deserves better than that. You walk in silence for a long while. Honestly, you're surprised she hasn't sent you away yet. They are aware of how I am. You think this is the point where you give her space. To be said in her own story. To say what she needs to say now, in case she never gets another chance. And they are aware that I am... They are aware that I am not open as I should be. It is something I have been working on on my own. And it is something they are allowing me to take time with. You cannot force people to get better. But you can be there for them. I hate this planet. But I care about the people on it. And I will keep fighting. Because at the end of the night, that's all I can do. Even if the thing I'm fighting for is my own instincts. Nah, I'm good. I, I have... I have uh, ketchup in my town, you know that. Maybe you should preface that you... Ketchup is moving out of Brit's town. Does anybody want ketchup? Does anybody have an open plot for ketchup? Because ketchup's one of my favorites, but I already have her card, so she's already in my town. Even if I have to fight in order to stay the sort of person I want to be. Anyone can do good things without believing they are a good person. And anyone can strive to grow and improve. I took her so I could give her to Ryan eventually, but he bought a card instead. I couldn't wait! There's no way to survive on Alternia peacefully. Does that make me a bad person? I haven't played Animal Crossing in a couple weeks. I probably, um... Even if some of my villagers moved out, that's okay, because they're all from cards anyways. There's no way for us to save everyone. Am I somehow forsaking them? And there's no way for us to show mercy to all mercy to all that want to harm us. How many times do we have to make that choice between mercy and survival? It's not hypocriticism wanting to stay alive, wanting to be safe. There's no way to live a life that is pure and devoid of anger, devoid of violence, devoid of the desire to hurt others for the pain they've caused you, caused the world. It's hard. Teaching kindness when cruelty lives within yourself, it's hard, and we struggle with it every night. But this world is worth fighting for, even if it hates us. Depending on how long this is, we might have to just do Dolorosa tonight and, like, do Signless tomorrow. This is like... 
This is like, this is long. Long, long. This is longer than the other ones. People around us are real, even when we are taught that they aren't. Even if we are taught that they don't matter. It's almost over, I think. Okay. Well, I have to do the other endings, though. That we don't matter. So we fight for each other. For ourselves. For a world where we can be good to one another. Because that's all we can do. Wow. That's... Yeah, that's a lot. Fight. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was... Determination. And friendship. Oh. No, that's fine. It's just, uh... Usually my brain is like, I'm, I'm able to judge. Usually I'm able to judge, like, oh yeah, the, the ending's coming up. But, like, this one threw me for a loop because I was like, oh my god. Also, shit, we just got the good ending. No, oh, fuck, I wonder what the bad ending's gonna be. Alright, let's get the instant death. Get Rosa out of there. Hands stretched out in front of you, you launch yourself towards the Dolorosa. Without explaining, you wrap your measly arms around her waist, launching through space back out the forest where you met. I didn't play the bad endings because I didn't want to be sad. <laughs> Oof. What? Just, if I don't play the endings, do you know how pissed off people on YouTube will be? Is she okay? Holy fuck, that was close. What the fuck just happened? Oh, uh, you sort of have these teleportation powers. You were worried it might freak her out, but you kind of had to save her life, so you just... You decided to leave? Yeah. That doesn't exactly strike you as the sort of person... She doesn't exactly strike you as the kind of person that would get kebobbed by a clown. That's exactly the sort of situation you'd rather avoid. Especially considering she's, like, important. You just let that clown stay there. With the troll that was helping us. Um, you didn't really have a choice. You... I was making a choice. You can't just fucking take that from other people. You don't get to decide my actions and what I do. You don't get to fucking choose for me to leave an innocent bystander behind. But you saved her life. And I should thank you? Is my life worth more than theirs? No, but... But what? You're wordless. What can you say? You acted without thinking. Tried to get her out of danger. Maybe it was a stupid choice, but you find yourself frozen as her anger bubbles up to the surface, surging out of her without hesitation. But nothing. Go back. What? Go back and help them, you fucking coward! You want to argue, but with the way she's staring down, it would be impossible for you to do anything else. She storms a step towards you, and you stumble back, reaching back for the alley, reaching, and you arrive. And then immediately close your eyes. There was blood. Just everywhere. You've seen blood before, but just, like, awful, copious amounts of violence. But that doesn't mean it's any less horrifying. The door was bashed in. And you swear there was a discarded arm up against the wall, but you didn't want to look too close, and... Oh god, your stomach rolls, royals. It's nightmarish. You can't, you can't stay here. You can't stay here. She's staring you down. You realize, rather belatedly, that blood is coated on your feet. She's clearly noticed. Has read through your expression and understood what it means. Her face twists into disgust. You let this happen. She's shaking with fury, you realize. Silence drags you out like she's finding it hard to spit her words out through her rage. You're a pathetic selfish coward and you let someone get slaughtered because of it you didn't even think to help them you just ran she doesn't know that and she doesn't know if she could if she could have survived it either and frankly you would much rather she didn't die you don't know what i'm capable of surviving you chose oh fuck oh no <laughs> you chose that you chose to look away what do you think gives you the right to look away? You would much rather I die? I didn't die? Haven't you learned that what you want doesn't matter? 
They deserve to live, just like the rest of us. Ice coats her tone under her gaze. You feel as though you're going to sink into the ground below and never ever crawl back out. After watching you sink into yourself, she turns away. Leave. What? Leave. Well. Ursula, I need legs. Okay, but no voice. Deal. <laughs> Ursula, this doesn't... <sighs> yeah. Every time I try to watch this video, it, it, like, cuts out weirdly. I don't know why. I not talk anymore. Well, we're done here, so... Leave. <laughs> Ariel needs legs, for anyone wondering. You've made your choice. You've shown what you will and won't do. You don't need my help running away when the bitter truth are hard to swallow. Go. That's not fair. You don't always run. You've... She turns sharply to look at you. Something like a terrible mix of grief and fury on her face. Her gaze downright murderous. You vividly and uncomfortably remember the terror of your encounter with her out in the desert and take a reflexive step back. Get out of my fucking face. Wait, no, she should just hear you out. This, uh, one thing I've noticed about this writing style, this MSPA is a dumb motherfucker. MSPA and the other games we played would be like, all right, I'm out, see ya. This one's just like, nah, just listen, just listen. You don't get to choose what I do to tell me what I should do ever. Whether it's to save my life or your own. But it's helped. It's done good things for people before, and you shouldn't be able to do that to anyone. Now get out of my way, or it's not going to be innocent blood spilled tonight. You remain frozen to the spot as she stalks off, head high, and doesn't look back. Hey, maybe you're a useless pile of shit. It, it does it by itself, by the way. The, the the I can't keep the title card up for any longer. Or the end card. Oh, so I, got a, I just got a Facebook message at 11.23pm, so that can't be good. It's probably from my sister. One second. Yep. Alright. Jump forward! This is a bad idea. You have to find something. Something to prove to her that, that it's going to be okay. That some of it will mean something. Even as memories of the adulterous Alternia flash through your mind, you clench your teeth and reach for her future. There must be something. This is important. It's worth something. This story, Aradia wouldn't have led you to it if it didn't mean something. You jump to her future and find yourself squinting as you try to adjust from the bright moonlight to the much fainter glow of a room. Of a cell. Oh. You see her standing in the back of the room, arms folded, clinging to herself as she stares into the middle distance. Despite your sudden appearance, it takes an achingly slow minute for her to turn her gaze your way. You wish you could say the look in her face didn't make your stomach turn. It's you. Her voice rasps, hollow and sore sounding. An equally painful, empty laugh follows. This is why you never came back, isn't it? Oh, fuck. Your words get caught in your throat. Tizius's words echo in your mind. They were both killed. 
along with their attempts at change. I don't even know what happened to their compatriots. Well, apparently you found out. You can't bring yourself to learn more. You're unable to connect this woman with the wildfire you've been with only moments before. All you can do is stare while she picks at her clothing. You can't decide whether it's fancy or if it's rags. Claws tear a loose section from her shoulder as she braids it. She's bored, alone, and hopeless. Springs creak as she sits on the cot. There's no second glance. You can't change this. And you don't seem to be the type to be able to kill. Frankly, I wouldn't trust you to do it correctly. Sharp footsteps approach the door. The Dolorosa's face twists, a mix of disgust and fear. The latter of the two is quickly masked as the steps draw closer. A tight fist closes around the painted strands of fabric, pale knuckled in tension traveling up her entire arm. Rosa! <laughs> A twist of distaste colors her expression for a moment. Ugh. Nausea floods your entire being as she turns her gaze back to you one more. She sees something shattered in you see something shattered in her. You open your mouth to say something. But what would you say? It's all too much too late. It sticks in your throat. They're either dead or may as well be. There is nothing left here. So leave. Leave. She doesn't breathe. She doesn't fidget or blink. No blood pounds in her ears. There's nothing but her hollow rage to make a sound. Can't do anything. Well, we're done here. You can't do anything for her. Behind you, the door handle rattles and her head snaps up. Without thinking, you reach out, desperate to get out of this room, to be far, far away from this time. The space and the story inside of it. And you find yourself back into the horror and back with the horror terrors. You should go back to her. Back to the forest. Do what she asked. Find something that will make it all worth it, but you can't. Gentaro would fix this. <laughs> That's my new favorite stream meme is is people just going if Gentaro was here, you know. Curling into a ball, you just allow yourself to float aimlessly between tentacles and beaks. There is a dread all around you. You don't want to see the rest of Aradia's story. You can't change it. You can't make it better. You can't even make it bearable now. Hold on. Bearable now, knowing what you know. There are no happy endings here. Dread. Anyone that feels like drawing. Oh, that's me. That's me. Hi, that's the wrong one. Anyone that feels like drawing, can you draw, um, Tizius? With this image under her? <laughs> Anyways, that was, uh... That was Dolorosa. That was sad. Yep, multiple people should draw this, absolutely. Yep, multiple people. Whoever wants to draw this, go for it. I want to see I want to see these drawings. Post them on Twitter and at me at Ryan Phantom. Because I want to retweet them. Just... It doesn't have to be Tizius, I suppose. It can be any of the people who are looking for a better Alternia. Just with that fucking... <laughs> Just with that box under them. All right, let's give us some time. Let's give us a few minutes before, uh... Zebra. No, he's not looking for a better tomorrow. The dude's just a dick. Let's give us a couple minutes between them. Uh, I'll be right back.
So, the first thing... The fir okay, this is going to be one of those weird Ryan tangents because this is how my brain works. I, I woke up this morning and <laughs> the first thing I thought of was a line from something. A television show, a movie, a video game. It, uh, it, the line is, you're blind as a bat, aren't you? When he puts on the other char character's glasses. And I... First of all, I was so tired that I mistyped it three times. So my history, my search history on Google is wild. I, t I typed it in wrong like three times. Um, <laughs> and only now did I remember that the line is from ALF. <laughs> The line is from the pilot. The pilot episode of ALF. <laughs> I just remembered. <laughs> My tired brain couldn't connect it earlier. I just, I just remembered, though. <laughs> uh... I missed the final bad end. No, that's okay, MLG. Just, you know. Just don't. Just don't. Just pretend it was a good ending and not sad. Hey, you know, you know who wouldn't have let the Dolorosa end up in... <laughs> I keep trying to save it as a PNG, but it won't save. Hold on. Yes, it was Gentaro, but I can't get the image to save as a PNG. Hold on. I don't even know where it's saved now. That wasn't it. Fuck. I hate, I hate, I hate Google. I hate, uh, let me, let, no. I hate that Wikipedia doesn't, like, post their images as PNGs. They post their images as, like, HTML objects. It fucking sucks. Gentaro Kisaragi. Get me, get me images. Give me... Hi, Google. Google, let me high quality images of Gentaro. <laughs> this is this is not this is not the image I was looking for. For context, this this character is from one of the many seasons of Kamen Rider, a, a television show in Japan that's kind of like, uh, kind of a bit like, uh, Power Rangers. Um, but this motherfucker right here, this motherfucker is the most bizarre main character of Kamen Rider, I think, ever, because his entire goal is to friend... Everybody he meets. That's his entire goal. He just... His entire goal is to be... Oh my god! He's MSPA! Oh my god! How did I never make this connection? Holy shit, he's just MSPA reader! What the fuck? Oh my god. Okay, but he has this secret handshake that he does. With all of his new friends, he has this secret handshake that he does. And it's fucking dope as hell. And I can't find a video of it on YouTube because copyright issues. But he's got- oh god. It's so good. He has this super complicated handshake that he makes everybody do. 
Oh my god. And he's in every episode! He's the main character! And he just exists! There's a Kamen Rider Forza Funny Moments clip. Oh my god. Where's that clip you sent me the other day? I'll play one clip. It doesn't have Gentaro in it, but it... Hold on. This is our, our quick little break. If you're watching this on YouTube, skip it. It's a bit late to say that, isn't it? Here it is, I found it. Yep, this is it. Hold on. I'm gonna get fucking shut down by copyright big time. Hold on. <laughs> Copyright is coming for me. <laughs> Anyways, watch Common Rider Forze. Very good. Very good. Watcha. Alright. Alright. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll move on to Signless now. I know you're all excited. I know you're all excited to get to Signless. <laughs> Jaybird, that's very, <laughs> that's very good. J Bird, J Bird drew it and posted it on Twitter. Here it is. <laughs> 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 all right, uh, let's go ahead and start on the signless. I know you're all extremely excited. To see what this boy's up to. So here we go. Volume select. Volume 2. The signless. People. Like us. Whatever it takes. Content warning. Slavery. Assault of a slave. Violence. One broken bone. Igor. And flashing lights. Igor, that's my favorite character from Frankenstein. You've come back, before you forge forward, and it's quiet. The feeling is different from the first time Aradia brought you here. Nothing in front of you but inky black space, and the tentacled things that seem to be... seem content to let you share it. But the shape of the ache remains the same. You don't feel that same thirst for friendship. Oh, you know what? I just realized. There's no video of the hand... I should record video of the handshake and make a compilation of it. But I think that... Hold on. I think... I think there's a GIF. Hold on. You guys have made me self-conscious whenever I say GIF. I'm like, these, these guys are going to rip into me. For no reason other than just to be annoying pricks. Where's this full handshake? That's funny, MLG. Haha, <laughs> you're so funny and not an annoying prick. Congratulations on not being an annoying prick. There's no gif of the hand- I can't find a gif of the handshake! I found this, though. You. He's pointing at the- <laughs> He's pointing at you. You are gay. Alright. You see, then, 
why this ex exercise might help. You remain the person you are, after all, and that person is inexplicably drawn to other people. You're doing it in the controlled way, where you aren't the driver of the narrative. Keep chocolate milk because you're eff Oh no! As an intro back in the friend venture, you will eventually need as as an intro back in into the friend adventure, you will eventually need to continue on. It's good for you. You're sure. You're just finding it odd to not be quite so hungry anymore. In some ways, it's easier here. This is history. You aren't responsible for who lives and who dies, and Aradia hasn't. <laughs> I want to decide who lives and who dies, Joel. Oh, I don't know. And Aradia has, in fact, already told you that you can't be. It's going to be hard, but it's a story. The story of the signless, Aradia has said. One about equality and life and fighting for it, the Dolorosa had added. You can do stories. The new noise at the back of your brain is more focused than the old noise. You're not sure what to think, looking back, except that you hope you are a nice someone to know for a night. Isn't that how you've been maintaining your friendships anyway? One intense night, and then charging forward. Are you ready? Aradia pipes up from beside you, totally unprompted. Maybe you've been brooding for so too long. You could brood for a while longer. The Dolorosa left you with plenty of material. But without waiting for your answer, Aradia opens up a shuddering window in time, and you, with a wary look back at her, stumble through. You've misjudged the time portal's height, which this time Aradia generously placed very close to the ground. So you hit the ground hard, like when you expect descending staircase to have one more step than it does. But it's because of her consideration exclusively that you don't fall on your ass, and then you stand straight up. And fall on your ass. <laughs> Looking behind you and up towards whatever accosted you, your sharp senses quickly identify it as a ceiling beam, low-hanging and sloped. Alright, I put it on Twitter. Oh, hold on, let me go check. <laughs> That's good, too. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> changed the world. Goodbye. <laughs> As you're rubbing at the sore spot on your back of your nug bone and whispering a swear under your breath, you take in the rest of your surroundings. You're an attic. It's an attic! Grandmother! Grandmother! Oh my god, look at all these follows. Thank you. The floor you've landed on is rough hardwood. Concrete forms part f <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I read it wrong, and then my brain completely died. <laughs> and all that came out was fa. Concrete forms parts of the walls, like you've seen on other hives before, but almost everything about the interior and ceiling is wooden. Old, crooked planks make up most of the ceiling, contrasted with tarp nailed underneath their gaps to keep out the sun, a more recent install. There's a distinct smell of recently swept dust in the air. Some of this wood has been burned before. Scorch marks stand next to the fresher planks made of the same stuff, but weathered in weird places and clearly scavenged. On the floor in front of you, only half unrolled, is what looks like a normal human sleeping bag. A second. There is what you think might be a third, though it seems a whole lot furrier. Next to a box of what looks like strips of bandages coated on one side with e oozing green slime. Soper, you know this one. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Your investigation continues slowly around and you approach 180 degrees. I like how you just turned 180 degrees and he slowly slides as a frame. He's just standing there. Hey there, you looking for something? 
Sweet Jiminy Kringle fuck your heart. I didn't want to startle you. It's okay. I tweeted the drawing to you as well. Oh my god. I love when we have a lot of viewers to just like, a lot of talented people to just fucking draw. What is this music? I tweeted the drawing to you as well. Did you? I don't see it. It's not popping up on mine. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn it up. I, I'm not sure what's up with this music. I'll turn it up for just a bit. Hold on. Well, no, I'm gonna turn it back down. I'm just want to listen to it now. This is some good shit. This opening, this opening... Oh, perfect, thank you. <laughs> the opening with the, the, with the drums, it, it sounds like, uh... It sounds like, like, early Green Day. It's, it's very good. Through fire, justice is served. <laughs> like, minus the shredding on the guitar, I think with the... I, I think this sounds like an early Green Day song. Uh, Nox found the perfect video, honestly, but the one I found was- okay. Nox found a clip of the handshake. I know this isn't really important right now. But I, I feel like- I feel like, at this point, we gotta. Here it is, here it is! And they they do the look at this shit. Next time, next time any of you meet me, do this handshake. That's the that's the new Ryan Phantom handshake right there. Just saying. Change to oh my god. Oh, it's big! 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 I wanna make it... I wanna 
I'll show you this. Boom! There you go. <laughs> I didn't even notice you added the M's. This one looks like, this one looks like actual, like, legit, uh, since, since he wrote it in, like, cursive, it looks like a legit, like, uh, serious art. <laughs> it's, it's good. Oh, I undid the retweet. I, I tried to retweet it again. That's very good. I love, I love these. God, this music is good. Alright. Uh, anyways, enough fucking around. Let's go. Alright, that should be good enough, right? You can still hear me, right? I mean, the game's probably pretty low. I can see I failed... I can see if I failed in that mission now. Circumstances weren't rooting for us, but we can try it for second best. How is your night going? This is an impossibly broad question. You tell him the term knight as a, as a unit of measure is a little flimsy to you right now. Hear whom? Very funny. He nods, like he doesn't know what you mean, but he knows what that means. Did you come here on purpose? Ah. This dude just watched you purify out of a gaping hole in space-time. That's definitely not a first, but it never shows off your most trustable angles. Now that the shock is worn off, mostly, and the stuttering pseudo-calm interruption of it has settled back into awareness, mostly, you take stock of him. The troll in front of you sits crisscross a meal grub sauce on the wooden floor, his palms open in his lap. You wonder at first if he's just been sitting like that the whole time. Did you pop in on this guy's meditation session? Yikes. But on second glance, he simply paused in using comically oversized spine of a planet that has definitely tried to stab you before for the mundane task of weaving thread through tear and satchel. So, just like human sewing, you guess. His most notable feature is a ridiculous pair of what would be leggings, if not for the fact that they keep going up, which is sure something, because his second most notable feature is his eyes. At first, you think he's blind, so you're not about to say your second guess out loud, but... He's looking back at you, or at least kind of around you, with yellow scler sclera, unlike Terezi's at all, with undeniably Carcat's mutant candy red. You want to kick yourself for being an idiot, because of course, it's gotta be, of course he is, the Dolorosa son's mutant candy red. So yeah, you're a dumbass, and it makes a whole lot of sense since this is the next chapter in the story. You're beginning to sense a theme. Is she still around, you want to ask? Before realizing that asking a stranger if their mom is still alive isn't the best way to make a first impression? Besides, what if you were just here last week? You know shit happens all the time in Alternia, but, uh, one, you really hate that thought, and two, wow, you've been quiet for a suspicious amount of time. As normally as you can man manage, hands folded gracefully in your lap, you ask the signless if you're so sorry he could repeat his question. He seems unbothered. I just asked if you came here on purpose. Uh, right. Well, you say, glancing around the room as though it will give you clues as to how to proceed. Well, uh... Do you know where you are? Oh my god, I know who he reminds me of. This will only affect a small few of you. Uh, but he reminds me of... Ryoji from Persona 3. Woof. So on the one hand, this is an outcast fighting for equality and the inherent worth of life. He is not going to hurt you if you explain your case in a way that outlines the truth. The whole truth. How your intrusion on his life is only meant as a friend, right? The Dolorosa didn't kill you. You were much shadier back then. You're apologize. You can minimize the my friend sent me here to learn about you angle. This guy isn't even wearing any knives as far as you can see. Besides, you kind of want to learn about the revolution. That is true. Um, 
Wait a minute, Ryoji does the hand thing, too. Ralph, what is this? A oh, big! Here, this is from Ralph. It's a drawing of Gentaro. It's a drawing of MSPA as Gentaro. And the text says, uh, Gentaro, when he rides the common. I don't know. I never watched it. No, you're right. Hey guys, you want to see something awful? Hey guys, want to see something real fucking bad? Of course, it's not a fucking PNG, so give me a minute. No spoilers. We're not going to talk about spoilers for Persona 3 because Nox is here. Um... But this is a character, Nox. I don't know if you even got to him. He's later in the game. Notice anything? Hey, notice anything? <laughs> they act the same, too. They act the same personality-wise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got so many images. I have so many images on this fucking... I have so many images here. I could just load them all. <laughs> There's so many images right now. <laughs> My final message changed the world. Goodbye. Alright, we've gotten three words into this. Let's let's go ahead and actually play the game, huh? On the other hand, for all his incredible welcoming airs toward a person who's burst into his busted-up hidey hole of an attic, he's unwedged his feet from under himself and casually freed his hands. You know that you're looking at a troll ready to run. You tell him. The fire justice is served. What am I going with, guys? Choose no, 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 you say, deciding maybe it's best that you keep supernatural shenanigans out of it. No, you don't really know what's happening at all. You just pop through that time window there, or whatever it was. Did he see that? That was wild. And anyway, you're really thoroughly discombobulated. Not to worry him. You're doing fine. You're adapting great. Maybe he could tell you a little bit more about this place? You're in Alternia. Am I right in assuming that isn't your home planet? I would tell you the system's name, but it's the same as the planets. We're at the center of an empire that spans multiple galaxies. Look. Look, all I'm saying... Guys, come on. Guys, all I'm saying... Look, all I'm saying is... If I just flip this... What's really the difference, guys?
I mean, come on! forever all right <laughs> I would tell you the system's name but it's the same as the planets we're at the center of an empire that spans multiple galaxies it's a very good sprite by the way I love it through fire justice is served uh, you're so grateful for a question you can answer honestly that you must look almost perplexingly, perplex, perplexingly relieved. Quickly, you affirm his assumption. No, you say. This must be far from home. We're also in my attic, which is one of the safer places for you to have appeared, but it won't remain so forever. In the interest of full disclosure, you need to know your, who you're staying with. Everyone on this planet has a legal impetuous to kill me. For different reasons. Because you're an alien. They have the same legal impetus to kill you. I'm not going to kill you. I have no interest in that. The people I'm staying with. No one is here now. It's alright. But they will be back before the sun rises. They won't kill you either. There are four of them, us here in total. From the tone of his voice. You would swear he's about to apologize for you, to you for the fright you got invading his attic. Do you have any idea what brought you here? Feeling a little guilty about it, the best you can bring yourself to do is shake your head. No, no, that's okay. Mike Clayton and I have little experience untangling the supernatural. Don't let me get false hopes up. I don't know anything about something like this. Interplanetary portal transit. But I do want to help. Do you remember anything before this? I also love him a lot right now, specifically. This boy, this lad is great. You're in a spaceship, you say, because that is true. Something started to go mysteriously wrong, you say, because that is true. You figure you might impact on a planet's surface and be lucky if you survived. Nothing could have prepared you to simply be deposited by a portal in a mutant's addict. Addict. What makes you say that? Okay, okay, wait, shit. There's nothing wrong with it. You were just referencing, you know, callability buddies. He said that. That he's callable. Doesn't every planet call mutants? Just a guess. It's okay. It's okay. I just need to know what you mean. You'd be surprised how many of my friendships have started with ill intentions. Just a guess. He seems really small. He's really small. There's no other things that seem weird to you. Sorry your wild mutant guess was totally incorrect. Wait, shit, you're not supposed to know that... Oh, did I accidentally just skip? Uh... Uh, hold on. Wait, shit, you're not supposed to actually know what trolls... Okay, he just... He interrupts you. Here's the situation. Truth be told, me staying behind closed doors with a stranger who's identified me as a mutant, reportedly before they've seen a single other member of my species, is... It isn't gonna be the safest choice for you. This is not going well. Are you in trouble? I'm not going to send you on your way back to someone who will punish you for a job poorly done. What? Wait, no. You're not a spy. You would have no reason to spy on this. It could be you. It could be me. Probably totally insignificant troll, you mean. Callability buddies? Do you know how to do that kind of... Here he loosely mimes a portal. It's not a very good pantomime. His hands are limp and embarrassed about it. And all you get is a vague impression of a circle. Teleportation? You helpfully provide? Teleportation. Are you able to do that on your own? Was that all you? Look at his eyes. Oh, look how sad he looks! So anyways, I started blast. Reminded me, <laughs> reminded me of Danny DeVito from Sunny. I started blasting! <laughs> oh, this wouldn't be... Okay. This wouldn't be a, a, a Homestuck fan sim 
if I didn't stop and talk about something else every two seconds. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, it's good. Action Frank. Go, Frank, now, go. <laughs> what the? Say the line now. Let me have a drink. <laughs> How about a shot? What the? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this fucking clip here. Two shots as they were intended by blasting them directly into your mouth. Awesome. I'm wasted. <laughs> <laughs> that episode has so much good shit in it. That's the episode. <laughs> that's the episodes which that's the episode where Charlie makes kitten mittens. That's the episode where the egg joke started. Oh, it, actually, in that commercial, that's the, where he goes, egg! The egg joke started in that. He comes in and he goes, and I start blasting! That, that whole episode is just so fucking good. That's one of the best of the entire series. I can't believe I closed out before he got to egg. I completely forgot that was part of the commercial. Hold on, where's... Yeah, it's good. Where's the egg? There it is. Go, Frank, now. Egg. <laughs> egg. <laughs> egg. <laughs> Yes, yes, you can teleport. That's a thing that's true. He looks deeply uneasy. I think... I think you have to go. It really has otherwise been good to meet you. He doesn't even wait for you to zap out. By the time he's finished speaking, he's already walking you towards the hatch down from the attic. The way you quietly led an annoying guest to the door... The way you quietly lead an annoying guest to the door when you're trying to tactfully end a conversation. Look at him up there. <laughs> Look at him up there. That... That end panel kind of looked like... It kind of looked a bit like vast error art. Just just the way, um... <laughs> also, it was ceiling cat, too! It, it really was ceiling cat. Uh. The past. Alternia. Oh, Just a little bit earlier, you find yourself saying? This guy seemed very quick to accept that an alien's transportalized into his attic. You've declared honest, uh, honesty the best policy before. You've been wrong some of those times, but you've also been right some of them. Uh, you go with your gut and accidentally look like an idiot in the process. He leans back, shifting his feet slightly, but not as if to stand, and takes the sight of you in. This is Alternia. Tonight is the third night of the fourth dim season's equinox. Where are you from? Oh, uh, you're not sure exactly? It's 20-something on a planet you're from. But she sort of doubt that clears anything out. Clears anything up. I guess... <laughs> I guess technically for MSPA Reader, it would still be 2018. A much better time. You know. Before the coronavirus and uh, Triple E and uh, Donald Trump. No, wait. Wait. Nope. I take that back. Donald Trump did exist in 2018. Man, the years are just fucked up, aren't they? Jesus. 
Everything is just going by so slowly and so quickly at the same time. What a nightmare. What's this, silly? <laughs> Nox, nice! Oh my god, Nox drew one too! <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> you're doing slightly transparent, you son of a bitch! It's from the one. <laughs> It's from the peace meme! It's from the peace out meme where the guy like slowly disappears! Uh. <laughs> Change the world. This is my final message, goodbye. And then Ceiling Carket says bye too. Through fire, justice is served. That's fair. Your planet sweeps probably wouldn't mean anything to me. Nice catch. How about this? Where are you from? Earth. Definitely Earth, you say. With a confidence you do not have. Can I ask how you got here? You would try to explain your alien situation the same way you would back when... Way back when... To Vicare or Sarava, back when you knew nothing. The crash landing, the spaceship hijacking since you know you're speaking to a fellow criminal, uh, the things the Alternium planet's surface did to your soft, bushy alien organs both on impact and at least one incident per week since then. It's a real Arnie Niekamp moment. Just look. About three and a half years ago, I fell through a dimensional portal behind a Burger King in Chicago and ended up in the mystical, magical land of Foon. Luckily, I still get a slight Wi-Fi signal emanating from the spatial rift, and I use it to record a podcast I record with my friends weekly at the Vermilion Minotaur, where we all are. As for everything beyond that, isn't there some conventional wisdom about not telling people the future? Particularly when their future doesn't seem to end the way he plans it to? You don't think he should know that future Alternia you came from is the same. Rhythmic idealist on Tumblr. I mean, uh, how to reach you. You can, you, you can uh, send me an IM. I'm just Ryan Phantom on Tumblr. Uh, but you do tell him about your powers. The rundown. The gist. The gist. You tell him about Aradia, and that she's helping you navigate. You don't trust yourself to remember which parts of the truth you have and haven't told him if you make it too hard on yourself. Aradia's cool, you promise. Oh! Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to the chat. I'm a dumbass. You finish the hard part, embrace to explain your time traveler's code of honor. How has it been? You tell him a vague story about miraculously surviving your first visit to Clown Church. You slap your colorful illustration of the clown armpit experience right onto the end of that story, since it tends to be a crowd pleaser. Eh, eh, debatable. Earth people are loving it, though, and allude to the fact that you've been down in the entrance to the caverns, but mumble that you didn't see all too much. In the interest of responsible time traveling, you're pretending these are contemporary stories. You think some of your slang might have been uh, anachronistic. Anachronistic. But he seems to be giving you a pass. You tell him about the extraordinary luck you've had, and also the terrible near misses you've had, and about living in the ruins of a building that's no longer used because you figure he'll relate. There's a lot of adventures, actually, packed into the side of, your, of town you can see from your weird defunct little tower. The nearest city anything like that is a good few days away. It's all gated factory subgrubs around here. There's space powers too? How did you find this place? That's tricky. 
You evaluate here, not wanting to draw Aradia into proverbial line of fire, and go with near honesty again. Your powers are more drawn to people and connections than to geographic locations, you explain. I'm a friend of your mother, sort of, you continue, because both parts of that statement aren't untrue. You tell him she mentioned the signless and a rebellion, and the two of you start uh, start upright out of your conversation when there's a loud fzack in the air and an unmistakable sharp burning smell following it. It reminds you of that time your own brains got cooked, and you shake yourself out of it, jarring your follicle and Cooper memories back to the alpha timeline and yourself back into the present. You've bonked your head again. The signless, on the other hand, seems to have avoided your fate by pressing a hand to the ceiling beam above him. He's quicker than you to his feet, holding out a hand. At first, you move to take it, and then you realize it's not really offered so much as held up to still you. His palm is facing down. His other hand pulls up his hood. Hey, I'm sorry to cut you short. Contrary to the most con conventional Alternian wisdom, I'm going to walk toward the problem instead of away from it. This isn't my hive, or else I'd invite you to stay here. It's just not my offer to make. I like I like the the detail where um he put up his hood and the 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 color of the uh the box change. That's good. Now he's offering you a hand. It's the Brit emoji. <laughs> it is kind of the Brit emoji. You have the forethought enough to pull your hood up too, as the two of you scroll uh, stroll out into public. Can I help you find somewhere to wait? We'll continue the conversation. I'd like to. I understand if you prefer to get the fuck out of Dodge. As you get closer to the direction he's confidently striding towards, you've just trusting his chance. You've just trusting his sense of direction and followed. Uh, you start to hear the sounds of a scuffle. As you get even closer, you start to think it's the kind of scuffle that only gets labeled as a scuffle for comfort. When one side's doing most of the fighting, it's clear what he's offering you the chance to get away from. This is the part of the story, and you're supposed to be here for it. Besides, you aren't one to abandon a new friend hopeful over a little danger. You'd be saying that even if he didn't look worryingly fragile. Comparatively, you've seen a few adult trolls by now, and you know a kid who towers over him. <coughs> you know a kid who towers over him. Yeah. I'll be alright. You look back over him and shake your head solemnly. You pick up the pace to keep stride. Alright. Are you sure? I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna be a fight. It's not going to be a fight. I'm gonna ask you to stand back and let me talk instead of jumping into help. And I know that is harder. The smell of electrical burns hangs in the air. A voice drifts around the corner. Indistinguishable but angry. Yes, you say. You're sure. Okay. In that case... I need you to know it's going to look like it's working. It's not going to look like it's working. I know you can make a good judgment call about what you want to do, but please give me that chance. The goal is to prevent harm, de-escalate. I'm not in charge here. I'm only asking for a favor, but it's an important one, and I know what the hell I'm doing. Oh no, you are 100% positive he knows what he's doing. So grateful to be with someone who knows what he's doing. You're magnificent in standing back and watching eventful things happen. Cowardice pays off. You've learned, sometimes, decently often. Depends on the volume. Point is, you're happy to just be moral support. The signless laughs softly, belatedly. Like his mouth almost forgot about it. You come around a corner, and an impressively tall, cerulean-blooded troll is throwing something into the, into the ground. Someone. Their nose breaks. The psionic crackle you heard earlier can't have come from them. Their eyes are hollow. The way follicles are hollow. Void rot. The way... Uh, uh, the way... That's a psionic with void rot, if you've ever seen one. You've seen at least one. But the troll assailing them looks burned all up their arm. There's a crack in the building to the left and looks new. Uh, that looks new, paired with a speckle of blue below it. That looks like uh, about the height of a chip on their horn. The space around the psionic's eyes lets off a stomach-wrenching, telltale rivulet of steam. 
The rest of the street is cleared, but no one has gone far. Passers-by have halted in their passing by, keeping at least ten feet back. A few eyes peer from the windows. One pair from an alley, someone pauses to inspect their shoes. A bronze-blooded troll carrying several heavy boxes, lollygags, as though they aren't remotely inconvenienced, and pausing with the heavy load in their arms was their idea. They all know how this story goes. They're minimizing casualties. With a rush of fury, you realize that this is needless. This is stupid. You could dash in there right now and zap the gold blood to safety and be back in time to get the signless too, you think. It hasn't always worked out that way. But before you can voice the idea, while you're still staring... What? While you're still staring and processing, not in shock, but not, to desen not desensitized enough yet, the signless steps into that ten-foot radius. Sorry. Uh, and then into five. There's nothing aggressive about him, but it's like he doesn't understand. Like everyone else here knows that he isn't supposed to be there, and he doesn't. And then he's standing taller. He's slowing the closer he gets, but it isn't until he gets just out of arm's reach that he stops, lifts his head high without pointing his nose in the air. This is going to be one of those sermons you've heard about. You're almost sure of it. You expect something perfectly calculated and uh, deliberate. You expect something soft and kind. You expect hellfire and brimstone. What you get is... WHAT IS THIS BULLSHIT?! Don't intervene. This isn't something you've seen before. Unfathomably overpowered high blood faces down low blood that you've grown accustomed to. The latter a person in peril, the former an unstoppable force, more like the fact of a life that a person responsible for their actions. Okay, not quite as accustomed as the trolls around all of you, the ones hurrying away like there's no tomorrow, and the ones who have found ways to bide their time, waiting for the sidewalk to clear without looking impatient. But you thought you got the gist. This, though. This air stands still. You have, like any reasonable person whose friends have healthy emotional ranges, witnessed anger from trolls across the hemisphere spectrum, high and low. You remember another of your very dear friends rap battling the fuck out of a high blood who stole her work. Fuck yeah. And you think that must be the other closest thing you've seen uh, to a revolution balled up all in one moment. Though, with a lot of showmanship and a lot less certainty. The thing that stands out, you realize, is that it's public. Someone has decided that it matters here, not to be bottled up and delivered at High Blood's convenience as manifestos in pit parks or feelings jams behind closed doors, but to be here, thrust into the face of the person who's hurting their neighbor. You look at him, and you feel that it matters. This is... Both of these, um... Both of these volumes are very appropriate to what's going on in current, uh... Current social events. Silas is standing with his feet shoulder width apart, planted in a way that is too firm to be ready to move, like roots might extend from his heels into the ground, like when he met you his weight is angled back. The gold blood is a step behind him now. You wonder for a second if the signless was waiting for something like this to happen. Uh, if being thrown created the physical distance he was planning all along to use, and then you remember neither of you knew what the fight looked like before you rounded the corner on it. Through fire, justice is served. You wonder what he would have done if there hadn't been any space between them when he got there. All of this moves through your mind in the span of a second, or half a second, or longer, and you just can't count time. He's moving much more quickly than you are, none so dumbfounded and adrenaline struck. The blue blood didn't look very impressed by the what is this bullshit. And you think there must have been no pause in his speech at all. I understand what you want, and there will be time for that. There are multiple ways this ends. Tell me what makes you need this one. And just by nature of something he's doing, the way he's standing, 
Oh, sorry. My body. As usual, whenever I read anything, my body is just like, dude, what are you doing? Dude. It's not even reading, it's just doing anything. My body is like, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. And I'm like, I need to go to the doctor. I'm like tired all the time. <laughs> Uh, the way he's standing, the way he speaks like he has a right to. The way nothing in his posture or tone or face has caught on to this being a moment he will die in. You can feel everything flipped on its side. Apparently, the Cerulean doesn't like feeling it. He's really feeling it. This stutter in the script. Apparently, pulling the rug from under someone having a power trip was a bad idea. He takes a step towards the signless, and you can't breathe. The signless takes a very slight step back, less than the blue blood is advancing. It's to keep between him and the gold blood, not to leave. Do you want this one? His voice never races past the point. It's a demand, not a yell. I'm not asking you something easy. I'm asking you to stare the choice you're making the fuck down. Everyone shifts on their feet around the confrontation's epicenter. The troll carrying many two boxes readjusts their grip and glances around after doing so as though they've committed a crime. A woman who can no longer pretend to keep scraping the same increasingly pristine patch of gutter flits to the other side of the street. Something in the scene in front of them twitches. Your gaze shoots straight back up. That's a criminal. You look up to hear the blue blood say. He says it like it's an obvious end of a discussion. A sigh. A really... A really? I have a job. This is the hill I'm gonna kill you on? Fat load of good she'll do to me now, he continues. But I don't think you or I wants to get a, le uh, a legis in here. Look, I'm coming through. Pardon. And you're very worried that he simply is coming through, whether your buddy moves his flesh sack out of the way or not. The signless does not pardon him. He does not move. The blue blood sneers, rearing a hand behind his back. We have this minute. We actually have this minute. Listen to me. You're frustrated. The way you expected this night to go down has been disrupted. And according to just about every person you've ever met, that's supposed to mean something about you. Notice your employer isn't watching. This troll behind me isn't leaving. I'm doing nothing to you. This is a plan someone else wrote for you that I'm interrupting. I want you to explain to me why you need this victory over someone who has no position to fight back. The story I'm looking at goes like this. You came, you came to blows. It's over. You have nothing to prove here. Nothing to win. And frankly, nothing worth carrying a flesh and blood trophy back to. The Cerulean opens his mouth to say, Have you ever had a job or... And the signless says, I understand. Which isn't a yes. They don't like it, but... I understand fucking completely here. Because that is the problem. We haven't examined it. Ah. The signless starts to say, but please try to, with me. At the same time, the blue blood starts to laugh. And the signless, for one, doesn't stop. Someone has position positioned your social survival over her freedom, and I'm tired of it. You should be tired of it. I know you are. I know you're tired of me proverbially dragging your head around to look at it. I know you're tired of looking away. You're bartering lives for the notion that you've proven you deserve the rights of your caste. And the rights of your caste are only to hurt. And what someone is hiding from in that cyclical logic is that you are only allowed to be something if you're worth more than them. No, more like signless. Aren't you tired of being mean? Don't you just want to go calm? <laughs> calm? I'm going to say calm shit. <sighs> Crack open a Mountain Dew here. Damn, this Mountain Dew is cold. It was just standing here. No. No. ML, you might be able to get away with that in Cassie's chat or Rev's chat, but if you post that, I'm gonna have Nox, like, ban you. 
<clears throat> that isn't something the slow blood did to you. That isn't something I did to you. You're bartering your ability to feel a single true thing for the ability to look away. To disconnect from the suffering of the trolls right in front of you. And who fucking put that there? She isn't what's hurting you. This troll got away. She died if you want. You explain that you're dealt with the callous disposal of your own cavern mate. And go back to living your life as a consenting, sentient barbed wire fence tomorrow. I... I urge you with every single thing in me not to. But this is one choice. It's one choice in one moment. It can spark change or get buried under the rug. And you decide which thing. Security or community. You want to walk away from. I will strive to keep that community door as open as long as I can. But people will die for your tardiness. You should come anyway some night. Just step the hell off right now. Nothing good or noble or inspiring is happening here. The fact that I noticed doesn't mean you can't, too. Apparently, somehow, that does it. He steps off. He leaves, wordless and self-righteous. You, still frozen in your spot, watches the signless, unruffled and steady, brings the energy from about a 10 to a 5. He turns to the gold blood, at the same time taking a step away from them. They are still on the ground, less uh, because they're stuck there and more because they know better. He offers them a hand from a distance that would be comical on Earth, and on Alternia succeeds at only being about half as terrifying as a stranger in your personal space could usually be. They stumble to their feet without taking it. You flinch as another troll steps out of the alley she'd be rubbernecking from. From there, she moves all the way into her, their space, but she's only there to help them stand. You try to exchange a rather panicked glance with the signless. Where the fuck are they going? Will it be any better than here? But he's busy exchanging a look with one of them or the other. So you're passed over. For the uneasy limping pace of the other two trolls have taken, they sure have disappeared completely down the alley when you look back. Fucking poster again. When you finish taking the long way back to where you came from, you're weary. The sort of dizziness that fills you up is the kind that comes with when adrenaline is built up and not spent. Two wolves. Two wolves having sex. Two wolves having sex. Their muscles. Their muscles involuntarily flex. The Silas takes a breath that fills his entire chest and lets it through lip, lips pursed into a minuscule O. Oh. As he's something of an expert in handling moments like these, you consider copying him. His hand is braced against the support beam of the hive, but you know for a fact that he isn't hurt. He doesn't at any point uh, in this look at you. You both climb back up to the attic. That was a lot. Should you two go check on them? The gold blood? The signless shakes his head. No, they're okay. They're more out of trouble than they would be if we were to try to find them now. I too would like to see them all the way out of town. And frankly, all the way to a brilliantly happy and healthy life and freedom after it. I'm very memorable. And going back now will only cause them more trouble. They've disappeared for the moment. Let's leave it that way. You guess you're also pretty memorable. I wouldn't have made it out like you, uh... I wouldn't have made it out like you coming along was okay if I genuinely thought it wasn't. Maybe you do have a point there. One I should have considered. It was good to have a friend at my back. Wow, you've only made, like, one choice. The friend bar must be super low here. You recall that he... <laughs> you recall that he called that overladen with boxes troll you passed on the way back friend, too. Though, a friend too, though, and that dashes your good mood. Sort of wonder if it's an alien for comrade. Thank you for being there. He's welcome, of course. And you mutter something to that effect. You think about the entire subgrub you've just walked through. Two big factories in the distance surrounded by small hives, much like this one. 
You get the feeling that the person whose attic you're crashing in isn't doing much better than the gold bloods you left behind. Than the eyes in any of those windows. Not one of them is free, are they? Not yet. One night, it won't just be low bloods teaching each other how to survive anymore. That kind of burden should not stay the, on the oppressed. One night, it's going to be walking into a town like this and walking out with its gates open and factories torn down. We've, we've seen things close to it before. I'm not talking out of my ass. Chains broken on a much more individual scale. I don't think that's what it's going to be tonight. Hey, that's okay, you say. And immediately clap your hand over your mouth for it. No, no, wow, no, it's not, but I know, I know. I don't feel like it. It doesn't feel like enough. Stop looking at me with those big old eyes. My family and I were brought along, brought along enough provisions to share with them while we're here anyway. There's enough to share with you. We should probably debrief on what just happened. I'm still rattled, too. He is? He doesn't look it. Do you, pref co do you prefer coffee or tea? Fucker! I knew it! I knew it! You bastards! I knew you were gonna... Oh my god. Such a stupid fucking decision, too. And one of these is gonna lead to a bad end. I mean, I don't like either. The only coffee I like is, like, just, like, basically sugar. Tea, 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 coffee, tea, tea. Tea sounds nice, you say? Tea is generally what people use to calm down, right? Are those both caffeinated options? How often does he use caffeine to calm down? Blast yourself. Then I start blasting! Wow! I'm wasted! <laughs> um, I have to start, like, compiling, like, a, a file of clips to play in stream. So that way, I that way I don't have to always look it up on YouTube and I can just pull it up. And this might have to be one of them. Two shots as they were intended. Yeah, like Star Wipe. That's the one I forgot about. I gotta load up. I gotta get Star Wipe on here. Star Wipe. We're going to the museum. We already filmed it. By blasting them directly into your mouth. Awesome. I'm wasted. We have verbal teas too. He stands, then nods over his shoulder at the ladder back down the way you came. Egg. I can't remember which ones we have, actually. I'm not sure I could explain our fauna to you well anyway. But you can take a smell and pick. He's right. Despite your short time here, you probably wouldn't know the names of sort of alien herbs. Oh, guys. I'm getting a little hungry. I'm gonna... I gotta... I just remembered I got a whole drawer full of uh, chips here. I'll open up one of these, uh... One of these barbecue chips. Good thing I didn't get those Doritos or I'd just turn into a gamer. I'd be drinking Code Red and eating... Cool Ranch Doritos. Nope. I'm eating... I'm drinking Code Red and I'm eating Lay's Barbecue. No, no ASMR. I'm gonna mute. Hold on. Good night, Lord Potato. Actually, now that you're thinking about it, you're sort of concerned about what alien herbs will do to your insides. But you don't think Aradia will allow you to die of poisoning.
Ryan, I don't know how useful it would be, but save the clip of Lupin dying. What? What clip of Lupin dying? From the first. Wait, why did- when did Lupin die? I- I watched it just the other day! What clip are we talking about? Oh, we're Lupin just fu yeah, we're Lupin just fucking dies, yeah. Turns out he's one mental step ahead of you. Because he leaves two of the little pouches of leaves aside. And Quiet explains that they're medicinal. Before telling you what's going on in each of the remaining boxes. Oh fuck, he's got weed? Yo. Does the signless have kush? Does he have that sweet kush? You select one that is compromised almost entirely out of something called... Stingerment. <laughs> he sets a kettle on the stove. That's right, Brett, I forgot you don't like mint. Now that he's mentioned it, you understand what he meant about being rattled. Even in here with closed doors, he's still sort of moving like he's hiding. When he sets the kettle on the stove, metal on metal, it doesn't make a sound. Turn your gaze casually away to give him a minute unwatched. But he catches you, naturally. What are you thinking about? Sorry, I'm eating my... Uh, let me finish my chips. Give me, like, a minute. That should be like my, that should be like my new, like, my new subscription sound. Should be awesome! I'm wasted! I sent you some more art. Oh, really? Oh, oh. It's very good. Massive, massive cat. I just retweeted it for anyone who wants to know. Oh, Child Drew! Child Drew changed the world as well! There's so many- That's another one! Silly who drew it too! There's so many changed the world! How many are there so far? Hold on, one, two, three, four, five. There's been five! Change the world, at least on Twitter. Uh, so funny. It's so funny. I love it. <laughs> this is like, uh, Chixie's gun. We've started a new meme. We've started a new- we started a new friend sim meme. Uh, what are you thinking about? So I guess running and hiding all the time really makes running and hiding all the time seem like an unfair way to start. So you try to broach the whole subject area gently. The hood, you ask. And Zebra's scooter. Well, Zebra's scooter wasn't really us. Zebra's scooter happened on stream. He really just fucking face planted on that fucking scooter. That was real. 
Uh, if we don't have a Twitter, where can we send you a drawing? I mean, if you just post it online, like, I'm like... I don't know. As long as it has a link, you could just link it in chat. That wasn't the topic of conversation. Ah. Huh. He's much less wound up about it than you expected, but it sounds a little sad. It sounds like something you might understand. Your existence has tended to always be a topic of conversation eventually. Oh yeah, Brit's... How many Nook Miles tickets you got, Brit? 54, did you say? 53. Brit has 53 Nook Miles tickets and is going on that Audi hunt. Everyone wish Brit a good luck for tomorrow. You sort of still have patience for being a novelty, though. And you're not hypothetically just by nature, not back home, not since birth. The signless laughs softly, tying each tea bag to shut deposit in your mugs. Oh, tying each tea bag shut to deposit in your mugs. I haven't been since my hatching either. Not in the way that you're thinking. Troll Mom was good at that. She was phenomenal at that. For all the thousands of things she was abruptly in position to need to unlearn, to even realize which things are to be unlearned. Obviously, we've been stumbling through this since my hatching. Obviously, we've had a couple dozen heart-to-hearts about identity and self-definition, and what they mean for both of us since then. But I wasn't a novelty. I was a stranger. But I wouldn't even call myself particularly strange. The world had an established pattern it understood. It didn't plan for us. I think the first time we had this discussion, I found that to be a very strange mistake. That's a complex thing to put on a child. There isn't any avoiding the fact that you are in a world that hates you for what you are. You get there eventually. But there is comfort in knowing what you are. Comfort in knowing that you are, and that's good enough. I haven't quite finished defining what I am yet. It's a sort of comforting to know that you're not the only one, even if this crisis of identity is much less metatextual. Hell, I didn't even call myself a lowblood until I was nine because I insisted I was appropriating something I had never lived. Until a very good friend of mine flicked me on an auricular foil and asked me, flicked me on the auricular foil and asked me if I had perhaps ever experienced and dig deep to answer this one some kind of subjugation for my blood. When he laughs, you laugh with him and you both rather needed the break. You appreciate how he either is good enough friends with this troll that he still laughs to tears about their sort of mediocre jokes a sweep later or just likes hearing himself talk that much. I think that helps, though. The concept that the world didn't prepare for us. Because the thing is, one gets to taking and realizes that the world didn't prepare for anyone else either. That it didn't prepare for any single troll who wants to be free and to love more than they want to hurt. I've never gotten to know someone legitimately and to their core found they wanted to hurt. That the world to which we're referring here isn't the world, by nature at all. It is a choice. It is living and by choice evolving. Or stagnant thing, stagnant thing that structures, that is structures made by people. And that for every one of them, it had prepared a place, an archetype to fail, instead of preparing for them. The thing is, you and I aren't the only people on this planet without some messiah's given definition. He sounds very well adjusted about it all, you say gently. He reads through your gentleness very quickly. Bless this man, but boy howdy, can he ever forget how to stay on topic. I understand that sometimes the conversation I'm facilitating needs to be about the things... The thing that's fixable. In moments like those, it's a life to save. It's immediate. In so much of Alternia, it's immediate. So he can't do it as him? You hear the words he thinks he's dancing around, and you don't like them. So his mutation is just... What the fuck? A distraction? So he doesn't get to be 
Inconvenient? That isn't right. No! Or Terra's emissary, no! This movement is for me as much as it is for anyone. It's for every grub like me who never made it past the Cavern's Gaper. It always has been. If I could always work for it, with my hue on vibrant display, I would. I would raise a fucking banner with it. You don't have to believe me, but I'm twice an out I'm twice over an outlier. I'm a troll whose blood doesn't follow the bounds we knew before I was hatched. And I'm a prophet who sees what could have been instead of what's coming next. And I'm telling you, in the universe we could have had in the universe we could have had, I walked around with my eyes uncovered and with without exaggeration, what is probably the most obnoxious neon scarlet belt anyone has ever seen. The width of the three my the three of my fingers. Any second of any night, start arguments dressed like that, on purpose. I was an unstoppable, preposterous little shit. Okay. Lowest effort changed the world. Yeah, it's good. It's just, it's just the, the uh, Tiziest sprite. God, there's so many. There's <laughs> so many change the worlds. Face has shifted, caught up enough in the thread he's distracted himself with. You're not sure he remembers the question, but he looks happier. You roll with it. I want that. No, not the, not the starting argument shit. That was bad, actually. That was not always, uh, not always, but often pretty bad. I mean that if the night comes when I can conduct myself even in danger as a mutant, and it will do nothing but make me a good example... If it isn't for my ego, if it won't detract, I would love to. I will leap at it. If anyone in my shoes made the other choice, I know I would applaud them. This doesn't sit right on you. That for all of this, your friend has moments of keeping himself publicly palatable. I know. It isn't me. It was me to a point. But it's my gift that my think pan has learned better, even if it did so before the world caught up. And the world does have a lot of catching up to do. You look around yourself at the hive you're in. It's decorated. You can tell any troll who you can tell the troll who lives here makes it their own, even though they don't own it. There's a little line of colorful rocks in front of the curtain in the window. Ah, there's a shadow behind it. You're about to say something, nudging the silence's shoulder. He jumps to show him. And there's a rap at the door. One look at the sign list confirms that no, your gracious host's work day is not over, and they wouldn't be dropping by home. He gestures for you to move up towards the attic, wordless. You have a better idea, and zap him to the first place you can think of that's away from here. Oh boy, this doesn't seem like a smart idea. No one else is here this time, of course. Goodness, though. You'd appreciate her help solving this problem. Maybe you should just go purify wherever the Dolorosa... No. Then you'll just stay here. Ah, you're not the ones in trouble. You're very in trouble, but you're not the person who lives there. You broke the law by existing, not by harboring fugitives. Ah. What a grand mess you've made. You don't get it. He didn't do anything. No, he didn't. That's not always how it works. If anything, I shouldn't have pulled us downstairs and gotten distracted. But we aren't responsible for... We aren't accountable for the fact that the planet already sucked before we got here. Before we got there? He looks both startled and befuddled by your eureka moment. No, listen. You can change this. You can fix this. Time travel. Remember time travel? You told him about time travel. Your powers, you explain, aren't always as flashy as the portal he saw you arrive in. Change the world. You zap around the area a couple times so he could see it from the outside. 
You punctuate the display by zooming very, very, very many miles away, picking up a seaside seashell from far off beach, and returning with it, still caked in wet sand, to offer him. He clearly wants to feign a little interest, but his eyes simply will not stop blinking. What is this, silly? That's good. This is good. It doesn't bother you that stress is a predominant emotional response you're getting here. That is your predominant emotion, too. You start talking. You can't go back to your past self. You can't go back where your past self will see you. That's a paradox. But you can shift some shenanigans around. You could not have showed up at all. You could simply pick a new different night to meet him. Boom. New timeline. Same timeline. New story. You're really not sure how it works. You can fix shit. No, no. It's alright. I would have been out of the hive several blocks in the opposite direction by the time the fight happened. If you hadn't shown up when you did. I'm grateful that you gave me a reason to be in the right place at the right time. So we have to fix this literally? No, okay. Just give you a minute to think. I'm gonna go back and talk to them. You're not sure how often your friend talks his way out of danger, but this seems like a lot of times in Check's watch, like 40 minutes. You really don't think this could be a solution to everything. It's not. Whatever else you have, I'm listening. I just won't pick a solution that puts someone else at risk. Someone is at risk. You remind him very gently that someone is at risk. I won't pick solutions that trade one life for another. And if you go back to Begaradia to drop you off at a different night, he won't have saved the gold blood. This sucks. This sucks. Is he sure, you ask delicately, that this isn't a case of simply trading his life for another one? A life is a life, you add sagely. A lot of people have taken consequences that aren't theirs. That would be mine, for me. This is bad. Everything about this sounds bad. This wasn't intended as doubt. I'm very good at this. You quietly hope he doesn't think taking talking is actually how he gets out of everything. You don't need to intrude on business that isn't yours. Probably shouldn't have come from you. He knows. You realize that with another flash of anger that he's defending the teal blood too. You aren't really sure that's fair. I understand the position I'm putting you in. I don't lack faith in myself to work this out anyway. Neither of those things feel... Like they're changing the position he's putting you in. You can... You could just go back to see. To watch. To find out how bad it actually is. They saw a shadow or two through the window. That's all you know. Tricks of the light happen all the time. And so you, not him, just you, can go back and watch from outside. Quiet and unobtrusive. And you can see what this troll does. Maybe there's no danger at all. Maybe it's over. You wait for an answer. The signless nods. And so, first order of business, you clear out the attic. Uh, you zap back to the moment before you two had left. Gather the items strewn, upon the, uh, strewn about the attic into a messy pile and zap them back with your arms around them. Leaving the mess with the signless to sort through, you continue. With your hood pulled up again to cover your freaky, hornless appearance, you stake yourself at a lookout spot between the two of the neighboring hives. You've zapped backwards in time about a minute. That works out almost perfectly, because it only takes five seconds before your teal blood comes to knock on the door, and you, through the window, see the flash of light of yourself and signless zapping away. It's only a second after that when they open the door. And sure enough, once they do, they only spend a minute inside before moving on. They look a little embarrassed about it, like they're trying to shuffle along as quickly as they can before anyone can see they've taken time out of the day for a false alarm. You deliver the good news, and the signless lets out a sigh of relief, like he hadn't been quite willing to exhale while you were gone. Okay. So now we need to go. He's finished packing, apparently. Right before he got here, because this... He slings two of the bags over his shoulders. Do you think you could find the Dolorosa and Disciple unobtrusively if I give you directions? I trust that more than me walking the old-fashioned way. You've been doing this for a while now. For his sake, you're confident you can. Okay. Oof. Time and space powers, you remind him. You can go in a minute without being late. Is he alright? 
it's hard not to be a person to be the uh it's hard not to be the person to be the hero man i'm hold on i have to go back it's hard not to be the person to be the hero you remind him but everything is okay no harm is going to be done thank you i know then what's wrong nothing is quite technically God, I wish you would shut up, son, unless you talk so much. It's that car cat. It's that car cat in you. I am quietly, personally upset that we are going to be leaving two nights before we plan to. That's right. This sort of still sucks. He's not going to get to say goodbye to his friend here. It's not the first time I've done without goodbyes. Gosh, you, um, you guess it wouldn't be. They, uh, they probably can't exactly be pen pals. It's nothing new, and I promise you, it's nothing I need to process out. And if I give myself a little space to be upset over it anyway. You've done great. I would have gotten someone in trouble. And you found instead very much the best possible solution that Alternia offers at this time. Okay, yeah, but it's allowed to suck. He talks magnificently about community. But you're not actually sure how long he ever stays in a community that he's larger than four, or like five or six, you guess. He talked about the concept of taking people with him. It dawns on you that this has got to be some, uh, that this has got to be a lot of how he lives. Inspiring people, surrounding himself with people who, very much like you, needed him. But those are transient relationships, always moving on. You're going to be moving on. Isn't that how you've always been maintaining your friendships? One intense night and then charging forward? I know. We both know that general lifestyle, apparently. Not every single person you love is in a position to just pick up and follow you, right? It'd be absurd. Okay, but it'd be kind of nice. He looks at you for a moment. Hey, I'm sorry. I called you a friend earlier. I know that's a very fucking loaded phrase, and everyone has different comfort levels with that. I, for one, am trying to normalize the notion of caring about each other and being involved in one another's lives, but I also know the challenge of saying that over and over again. If you're always going to. Is it going to be easier for you moving forward if I cut that phrasing out? Well, fuck. Does, um... Does he want to cut it out? I've been comfortable with this for a long time, but... After this conversation, I sort of might. <laughs> Was that the bad end? Was that the bad end? <laughs> Coffee it is, then. Are you sure? It's, it's just instant. It's very cheap instant. I'm none too picky, but I feel I ought to warn you. With some of the food you've learned to survive on around here, a good normal cup of cheap instant coffee sounds positively luxurious to you. Yeah, the Oran High coffee, exactly. Instant coffee? He laughs. Fancy tuna. Warm, and though maybe this is just you and your weirdness, rewarding to be on the receiving end of. Oh. Sometimes it skips over the dialogue. Tells you to take a breath, and you do. Oh, oh, I see. And it cuts back. Okay. And he descends to the kitchen. He's back not too long later. First his hand to offer you a mug, then the rest of him. So, the debrief. The debrief, you echo, formally. Firstly, I want to know you are not unique in this. Usually, after anything horribly emotionally terrifying goes down, we, my Clayton and I, we try to sit down and process it out. Oh, about that. Where is his clade, anyway? We're spread out during the night. The troll who raised me, that's the Dolorosa, whom he met, is off doing the same kind of thing I like to do. The first night we stay anywhere, meeting people, learning what the community cares about and what they need. I was going to join her at that in a minute, but I'm glad you caught me before I did. One of the unaccounted four pieces of my heart is helping our host's neighbor. 
The other is waiting for us far outside of here. I wouldn't ask him to come to a place like this, and he agreed. It's all quieter outreach this time. You nod as if you know what that means. I know it isn't what you're expecting. You said you'd heard about sermons. You should come sometime. We don't have quite the breathing room for that kind of work right here and now. As for right now, how are you feeling? What, just... just all of it? Well, not necessarily at once. You think you're okay, mostly. You're embarrassed to find you're mostly okay. You're confused and angry, and it shouldn't feel like that moment ended because you're safe. I know that we didn't single-handedly fix an entire life in one night, and we can't know exactly where they're going to go next. I never like leaving without having done enough. I've got my reasons for choosing to trust in this. Sorry, I got a... I need a haircut. My hair is, like, getting in my eyes and shit. You think about the woman who did help them away. Uh, help them away. Sheepishly, you admit that someone who's been living this uh, for her entire life is probably better equipped to help someone else survive it. Maybe even get out of it than you ever will be. Then you'll become in the next 24 hours, anyway. But all those trolls who were just biding their time, you say. The other lowbloods along the street? You nod. You were so angry at them for doing nothing. Sure, that's exactly what you did, but you had a plan. You've intervened before. You wouldn't have just... You were so angry that they were paralyzed, that they were complacent, that this was survival. Would that psionic just have been hauled back or killed if the signless wasn't there? How has it been like for this for so long before he hatched? How has anyone let it? You're right that I couldn't be the first person to say this is not okay. I'm not. I'm a thousand times more over not the first person to think about it. It should take a flashy prophet amplifying the pain a billion people have tried to call out before to get them heard. Do you remember the sludge... The sludge stodian back there? The woman cleaning the gutter. You saw her, you think? You remember being distracted as she gave up on the side of the street for the other. She looked petrified about the concept of moving. You're right. She moved from my left to my right. Can you picture everyone's field of vision in that moment? Looking back on that? It's alright if you can't. What is one fucking doozy to learn? Wow, okay. Um, right. So the blue blood has been successfully averted to mostly staring at the signless, and occasionally to you, reasonably so. Considering your field of vision was definitely some serious, non-too-sneaky staring. The signless, his eyes were turned away from you the whole time, you wouldn't know. The gold bloods, oh. You deliver your answer, and he nods, repeating it back to you. She was moving where they could see her. You see it now. You don't see everything in the street now, but you sure don't see everything he was seeing. But she was staying close. Maybe she was ready to help them walk away, if no one had helped them walk away. Maybe she was there to make sure they weren't alone as they were dragged back, or as they died. Whatever it was, she was making sure they knew. I'm here. I don't know her motivations either. There are a lot of people who might have been ready to run or might have been ready to help. I have learned the art of informed guesswork, but I'm a people person and an optimist, not an empath. There are people who left, too, who are just trying to survive. But come to think of it, given your experiences in Alternia, you seriously wouldn't have been surprised about the ones who stayed. The valuable lesson of the night. Perhaps your friends aren't exceptions? There are moments when you look around you and find a cold world unwilling to care. There are a lot of people who bleed out on the sidewalks or lay incapacitated until they roast in the sun, the crowds stepping around them. There are a lot of people who bleed out on the sidewalks or... Oh. I hit space. I understand that as well as I can expect to. Hold on, guys. I know what it is to look at the world that hates you. I know as well as I can that it... It would have been harder. It would have been worse without the people I love. Being deserving of that kind of care isn't exclusive to those of us privileged enough to have already found their clades. 
And I think everywhere I go, the world proves it already knows that. That caring isn't exclusive to us, either. That there are so many people out there trying. That there have been eons before I was hatched. But even two, that as... That as yet unwilling doesn't mean in incapable. I am fortunate to have us clade waiting for me to come back. But what kind of... But kind strangers have helped me get home on nights when I couldn't... Wouldn't have otherwise made it too. Is that why he preaches? I'd like to say so. I hope I would be out there shouting these truths from every street corner and soap crate I can get my hands on. No matter what else my conditions, and no matter how, pass how possible it looked. In reality, it must help that I have proof. I called myself a prophet just now. I kind of fucking hate it. But that's the only word we have and approximates what, what I think is happening. I don't see forward, but I do sometimes see back. Parallel. I don't know. I'm occasionally allowed to mentally trip into Alternia we were supposed to have. And I know this isn't us. This isn't us by nature. The presumption of violence as the method by which society naturally ordered before was introduced to us via construct was fucking shit hive. I'm reclaiming that. Sanity is another normative spectrum that I am not particularly a fan of. I don't say that. There was a span of time where I was obsessed. I decided if we could figure out what changed between the universe we could have had we could have had in here. If we could work out what made us hurt this badly, we could undo it, right? We could solve the universe, reverse engineer peace. And then my clay dragged me down into reality. And reality proved we didn't need to. The people wait around and had me already proven. The people around me had already proven we don't need to wait on answers from the multiverse to heal. I have yet to meet another troll who isn't drawn to kindness. And I've yet to meet one who doesn't need it. That's all we've needed, and we... You should see this movement at its strongest. You should see us outside of what's essentially infiltrated prison walls. We freed people. We will hear, if we ever can. We've seen fighting rings shut down and once a would-be death sentence redirected. There's an auction hive in Offcleave whose owner won't rent it for the auctioning of trolls anymore. There's an entire subgrub out there, I won't name names, who collectively decided to chase the church out and did it. Things are changing. To hear him say it, your head inf inflated with narrative relevancy, your heart pounding for this one good thing, you want that. You want that desperately. There's a place for you in this too, if you want it. The fact that you know how this timeline ends comes crashing down on you again. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He hasn't mentioned your time-rending powers, but you are intimately aware of how you could use them. How you don't know exactly what you can do, but you know it's pulled something against the universe. Uh, something about this universe apart. How you're a tool against the space-time he's contained in. Maybe you could even go back to whatever he's seeing before the cancer was planted. Solve his visions with him and his family. And figure out what changed between the Alternia he sees and the one you're on. Maybe you find the problem way back then. You think about how it's probably not one problem, it's probably the building up of hundreds of smaller decisions over thousands of years. But if there's an Alternia they were supposed to have, then this one should be able to work the same way if you guide it along, shouldn't it? This is so much word. This is so much word, guys. I'm sorry. It's... My brain is, like, falling apart. It's just turning to mush. You would just need a roadmap. A plan. A set of points in time to twist, and then maybe, just maybe, you could undo the whole thing. Or moving forward. You could watch this revolution happen a thousand times. You could jump through it at night. Uh, at a night, a minute. It's not just Cankery, it's, it's MSPA, too. I mean, it's good, it's just, it's a lot, it's a lot for my throat. You could figure out where it goes wrong, because you know that Alternia, you know that the Alternia you just came from in the future isn't his. And you know this goes wrong, and then you could go back and let him know. You could let them all know. 
Yeah, I think if they're always going to be this long, I think maybe I'll split up the uh, the volume streams. You could give a few weeks of your time to look over the next ten sweeps, and then come back and confer with the signless about what to do instead. You have infinite do-overs. You can just load an old save any time. Between you and him, and the rest of his clade, you could hit Alternia at its malleable space-time core. You could take it apart and put it back together. You wonder if he knows it too. If he's waiting for you to offer, or if he was genuinely, never going to ask at all. Even if you just stayed here and did normal revolution work without lifting a supernatural finger. You wonder, at the back of your mind, where your broken memory lives, you feel something else. There is something else here, something bigger than Aradia's rules, but sitting next to him now makes you wonder if that's true. If that's something your old world, or this new one, or maybe that nagging piece of your brain that wants things to make sense, has programmed into you. If you want order, so you want to believe the battle's unwinnable. You wonder how many battles you faced down before that looked unwinnable. You wonder with your Alternian friends, with your new earthly friends, and you wonder what once upon a time left back home. You wonder how many unwinnable battles you left sitting when uh, when that was un ultimately untrue. You wonder if at time <laughs> through fire justice is served. You wonder if at the time even quietly you knew. And then you think about your friends, your new Alternian ones, Daria, Tavros, and Karako. And all the ways they've been able to grow and change and become magnificent, vibrant people. How they're worthwhile kids. How the signless and Dolorosa were right. And a person doesn't even need to be measurably, measurably worthwhile to deserve li to live. But hot damn, if they aren't anyway. So much word. You think about Karkat. And what he's still hiding from. Maybe you should make a better world for him. But maybe you set off on the ripple. You set off a ripple wrong, stepping on the wrong butterfly, so to speak. Behind the wheel of a large automobile. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. dun. Well, how did I get here? There is water at the bottom of the ocean. Carry the water. Remove the water. Maybe you stay here and make the wrong changes and none of them are ever hatched at all. Is that selfish? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh. For what is not the first time in your friend making escapades, you are sure not to be, and sure not to be the last. You aren't sure exactly when you started speaking out loud. It wasn't long. If it was about my friends in another time, I don't... I think I know what choice I would make, actually. But I'll never be faced with it. The world's not mine to touch anymore. This is yours. You've left a lot of friends in the future, right? You nod. I'm not going to keep you here. I don't know if there's a strictly right decision, but... I do know your friends are the most important people in the world to you. He offers a hand. It's quickly becoming apparent that... When he's hanging out with you and not being something for you, he's not the most informed on how body casually moves through space anyway. Then again, come to think of it, you're not sure any Alternian adult has a particularly normal casual relationship with friend touches. You take it. Oh, they're doing a handshake. Oh god, it's just like, just like Gentaro. If that happens, the fire justice is served. If it happens that I can't prioritize like that, then who is or uh, who is or isn't more selfish between the two of us isn't my concern. You care very hard. Whether you use that in my time or yours, on my planet or someday eventually yours, I wish I could promise to help you get back. You're doing something right. Keep at it. That's a tall promise to keep. You're not sure what you're doing right at all. You're not sure if what he's seeing in you. You're not sure what he's seeing in you. You're not sure if you painted enough of a picture for him to really know. You tell him that you will. Faith and troll manity restored. That was cute. That's a cute end screen. Oh my god. 
That was so much reading, man. My throat is fucking raw. My brain is mush. Hold on, I got... I got one video. Isu sent me a video of the handshake as well. Hold on. It's fucking loud. Of course it is. Oh my god, Isu. Isu's just sent me a clip from an episode of fucking... Look at this shit! Oh, I miss Forze so much! Fucking miss all of them. God damn. There it is, there's the handshake. I love you, Gentaro. Look at him, he's the best! He's so cute, I love him. Someday this will be us. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Thank you for watching uh, Distant Quest Volumes 1 and 2. I will keep an eye out for the next volumes. Like I said, if they're as long as this one, maybe I'll split them up. Because <laughs> my throat is killing me. They were great, though. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. Through Fire, Justice is Served. Also, Change, change the Future. That's fair enough. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just bring some water. I started blasting. This is my final message. Goodbye. Change the world.